Okay, back with another live stream tonight. Uh, first one got uh, messed up. And let me go ahead and check my audio before I uh, go on. <clears throat> Okay, well, <clears throat> let me tell you what happened. Um, my, um, I had uh, in, uh, ONVIF viewer that can view uh, the ONVIF compatible cameras going. It's a Linux app that I have on my Fedora 28 system. And uh, it uses, I know it uses a pretty good amount of resources. I noticed it the other day when I had it running for a while and kind of forgot I had it running. And then I decided to open up the web browser, and I put it into the settings mode thinking that that, uh, I knew it had a, well, I saw the preview, but I thought it was a frozen, you know, just like a snapshot, but it's not, it's still playing. So I went over to Firefox, and I made sure not set on the main player, the, the because it'll it'll almost lock up my computer all on its own. And I went into the settings, and there's a area, I can't show it again because it'll do it again. Went into the uh, settings, <clears throat> well, well, it might not with the OMVF player not running, but I'm not going to do it. Um, went into the settings and, uh, I was in the, uh, there's a place where you can change like the night vision and all that stuff. And it has a little preview at the top left and it's a live preview, you know, it's, it's playing. And so I hadn't, it didn't really dawn on me and I was playing two players at the same time. Uh, when one's pretty stressful on this quad core, uh, it's an Intel in, in, uh, Intel i5 with 4 gig of RAM, a Lenovo computer. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it's not a real powerhouse. And I'm streaming, you know, at the same time. So I always try to watch what I'm, my resources and everything. Well, uh, before I knew it, you know, uh, all the apps were acting up. And, and I mean, worse than I really ever remember seeing it. Uh, it was like things were paged, you know, things were blinking and it was paging to the screen. I was like, you know, I knew it was well and I had gotten over here. I'll get on the desktop now. I'd gotten over here in the system. I was trying to get over here, and when it gets like that, it'll happen before you know it. And when you try to click over here, it doesn't jump up real quick like it uh, like it normally does. Well, on the desktop, yeah, I saw my previews a little behind over there. Okay. Um, anyway, I was trying to kill, you know, uh, I was trying to kill Firefox because I, I knew it was probably the major offender, and I looked up there, and it was using over 2 gig of RAM, about 2.5 gig of RAM. And that's what it'll do. It'll just use up all the RAM on your computer until the whole thing's completely locked up. I mean, my mouse wasn't responsive, and, you know, it was just barely working at all. So anyway, I finally got uh, – it. my stream quit working. <clears throat> it went down, and but it was still recording. And I looked back at that video, and it did all the way to the end. Surprised. Uh, but uh, anyway, so I kept talking and kept telling them what was going on. And so I'll probably upload that video because it'll – instead of just having a dropped-out stream – <clears throat> dropped out, you know, in the middle of my end of right in the middle of my stream. So let's try it again, but be more careful this time. And it seemed to me, let's get back on the camera. It seemed to me that when I was using the, I was use, this time I was using the Cat 5e cable that came with. I hadn't even, even opened it until today, and I opened it up and tried out the Cat 5e cable that came with the camera. And if you haven't seen you know, the previous videos, here's the camera. Got it mounted on a board just so I can, you know, uh, test, you know, point it, you know, have it standing up and pointing at things. It's a C-Tronix uh, 5 megapixel security camera, outdoor, indoor, outdoor. Uh, and uh, so what I had done, let's see, I don't want to do this yet. I think I'll just put this here. Well, not yet. Ooh, I'm going to get a splinter. This old piece of plywood, it was a cutout. Actually, I... I remember what it was when I sat there looking at it the other day. It was a cutout when I was making speaker boxes one time. It was a speaker cutout. And I just use it like when I need something to, you know, set something on it and drill holes and stuff. And I have only used it once or twice, it looks like. But uh, anyway, that's where I, I had it out where I could get to it easy for that reason. And uh, um, let's see. I'm going to switch. I got to think here. My brain is slow tonight. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and. My brain is slow tonight. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get on the other on the lapel mic so that I don't have my mic mic stand there in my way, and I better check sound again. Any time I get on the other on the lapel mic so that I don't have my mic 
truck stand there in the way. Okay, I had to make sure I had actually done it. <laughs> um, so, what I'm going to go ahead and do, and I thought when I first turned it on with the Cat 5e cable, the camera, I thought, it looks like it's, well, it looked like it was a whole bunch slower, but then it began to catch up and act pretty normally, so I don't know what was doing that, why it was doing that. <clears throat> but I'm going to go back to my Cat 6 cable that I've been using because it's longer and I can move the camera around and uh, pull this out. I just have to aim my camera down here at my keyboard tray. Sometimes I put my workbench over here, but uh, it is so, I have to set straight up and lock my chair in straight up position and all that. And it just makes my neck hurt after just a little while. So, uh, yeah, I've kind of got a little, a little too low, I think. Oh, I can't get it to move now. It, it either moves too easy or too hard to move. Yeah, that way the mic's not taking up all the, you know, all the attention there. So, put this over here. What I'm going to do, I haven't, uh, I haven't ever tried using this. This came with it. It's a weather protector. Uh, a boot, you might call it, but it's not just rubber, it's all plastic, but it has gaskets and an O-ring and a rubber and a foam like bags ripping apart instead of opening properly. It's one of those, you know, those little bags, oh, it ripped, I think. Yeah, I ripped a whole lot in. I was trying to save it because I wanted to, I like to keep that stuff, but it was, the bag was, was more weak than the seal of the zip, it's a zip bag, you know, that you zip shut. Anyway, there we go. So, um, <clears throat> my Cat 5e cable, I think I'll take this twisty off for right now anyway. I keep twisties on so I can, you know, roll them up and tie them up. But, uh, <clears throat> my Cat 5, uh, this is a Cat 6 cable. I wanted to just see if I could tell any. I, could, I wanted to see if I could tell any difference, you know, noticeable, like, visual difference in the video lagging or anything if I used <clears throat> that shorter Cat 5e cable as opposed to this 15, 20 foot, 15 to 25 foot, I'm not sure, uh, Cat 6 cable. But I, it actually, if, if anything, it was faster on this Cat 6, which would make sense. It, I didn't think there was that much difference in the speed in them, but uh, don't know for sure. But anyway, um, so you got an O-ring here. It goes in one place. I have to look at it all over here. I think I might have had it up in there because that's where I thought it went. But this Cat 5, uh, Cat 6 cable, <coughs> it see how the ins the insulation is already split and you can see the bare wires? That happened when it was just really new. I've had this thing for, I don't know, three to five, six years. I don't know anymore. And it's still working fine. But you have a rubber... This came, comes with this. It's a rubber deal that, that's got a split in it so you can put it around the cable. So I'm going to put that. I think that'll help do strain relief. I don't It's not going to be. <coughs> I'm not <coughs> I'm planning on using this camera <coughs> wirelessly. <coughs> allergies are so bad in the drainage right now it's like i'm drinking something all the time yeah that's pretty gross isn't it <clears throat> okay so um let's see how do you put this on here oh okay this goes okay this screws on here so this oh i think i need to let's make sure that's even going to go over that but i don't need that on there first i don't think i'm going to get this <clears throat> I'm not sure if it'll fit over this little deal. It's got a nice clip on it that really keeps these from getting broken. And that's a little bit, quite a bit. Yeah, it won't go. I'm going to hurt myself. Wait, I think it's going to go. I'm going to get a tool before I jam that up, up under my thumbnail where it really hurts. I think it'll make it. 
I don't want to break that though. That is what makes this cable last. I mean, other, you know, well, of course, if that wire breaks inside itself from not having any strain relief, then it won't last. But a little bit at a time, maybe. I wish I had a big hole in. There. Is that hole big enough? There's a hole in this wood. That's what I need is something to. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, I see. I think I'm, there we go. I was thinking to say, I'm, if, if I'm having to force it too much, I'm liable to be very sorry I ever got it on there. Um, this would be the cable I used if I had to run this through the wall and outside to use this thing. But uh, if I used it over here by my, out close to my window, but the, it, it being, I didn't realize it was such a wide angle camera doesn't look good at that much of an angle. I've already been looking at it. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I don't want to use it over here now. Oh, well, let's see, I wonder if that's going to go. I think that O-ring goes, yeah, it goes up here on this part. And uh, I don't know if there was any instructions about that, but this, this I get. <laughs> I've never had, you know, one of these particular kinds of cameras or this kind of setup, but I've had used similar things. I actually did uh, installation work in, uh, in the year 2000. Uh, <clears throat> to the answer to the question of the old song in the year 2000, what will we be doing? Well, I was installing equipment in telephone company central offices. Oh, the first part went on, but the second one will never make it. So I should have thought of that. Okay. I was just wanting to use it as a strain relief. I was sitting there pulling and yanking on this. I ended up breaking my cable just trying to set this up. Now I don't have my little baggie anymore. Oh, man. Okay. So, uh, well, that doesn't go in there that way. That goes. Now I've got to get, let's get these out. Set them over here before I knock them off in the floor. Now I've got to get this off of here without hurting anything. I think I can do it though with the. Uh, I mean, I didn't force it a whole lot. Yeah, there we go. No big deal. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and just plug this into. Oh, let's get this off of there. I don't want that nice little brand new O-ring getting messed up from dirt and stuff. Plug that in, and then in a little bit, I will actually plug it in and turn it on. I've already, I've been running it, you know, I, I've been running it and I kept looking at that cable going, boy, it's just like I set it up in the window to test it and it was dangling. I thought that's not really, I'm setting everything, I'm just putting it kind of together enough to, oh, that don't work. It's pretty, I'm, uh, more tricky to get together than I thought. You got to put it together in just the right order. And that makes it look like, I thought that, uh, well, I'm going to leave it like that. I just want to have a way to put it so that it, uh, I don't lose the parts. Since I don't have my bag, I, I don't want them loose, for, you know. There we go. Now, and I'll put it in its box later. Okay. And the other thing, oh yeah, I forgot. Let's unplug that Ethernet cable till I'm ready for it. Oh, I might as well put my twisty back on there. As soon as I get done, I'll be wanting to wind it up like I've been doing. Actually, I think I'll put it on the other side of that. That's a tag, an identification tag. I'll put it down there. It kind of keeps it in where you want it, but it also lets it go down there and pull on that bad, you know, where it's... There's no, well, there's no strain relief, just pull on those wires. Okay, now. Um, here's what I want to do next. Uh, let's raise this back up so you're not looking, so my head's not cut off, because what I'm going to be doing is really going to be kind of up higher now anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Now behind me, I have my mic stand that I've been using as a camera 
tripod. Actually, look at the poor thing. It had uh, five legs, and it's only got three now. This is cast aluminum, and it keeps breaking. I had a whole bunch of these that I actually got. I inherited from a friend's dad. My friend didn't know what to do with sound equipment, and his dad was a musician, and he had a little recording studio. Four-track. Four-track reel-to-reel recorder. TAC, I think it was. And uh, that's what I learned on, was that stuff. <clears throat> and... Uh, Anyway, all I still have is like two mic stands and oh, and the microphones. This SM58 I talk on. Three mic. Let's see, SM58, SM57, and some other mics. One of them's sure that I don't even know if it works. It has to have phantom power, and I never had phantom power. But this board's supposed to have up to 48 volts phantom power, and it didn't work on that. So I don't think maybe the mic's bad. So. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and a couple other, like a realistic mic, that really old one that looks like, these mics were like, all his stuff he bought in the 70s or 80s, so. Oh, I do still have a Dynaco preamp, which actually, it's, I used it so many years myself that, you know, the switches make noise and the left and right channel keeps cutting in and out. It needs to be all taken apart and all the, all of the, uh, I can't think of the real stats and I, I can't think of the right words, needs to be cleaned or replaced and, I've got a Dynaco amp, which it was going uh, going out, and I found out how to fix it. And I, I actually put the parts in it, but at the time you had to adjust it with a multimeter, and I didn't have one, not a digital one, and I never got it done. Well, it's where I can't get to it, and I finally have one now, but I can't. I need help getting it out, or I need to feel awful good to get it out. It's buried in stuff. So it's repaired but not usable. 400 watt Dynaco amp, and what else do I have? Oh, a radio, an AM FM radio, analog AM FM radio. It still works perfect, it's just, I don't have it in the rack. The, the, the preamp's still in the rack, but the radio's not in the rack because I never really used it. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> what did I decide to do? Oh, I think that if I take the, uh, uh, my mic clip off of here that that this will fit right over that pipe <clears throat> and I can use this for a camera tripod again for this one this time so I'm going to take my screws out of my well I moved the camera and now it's well you know how to take screws out of stuff right let's see I don't know if I can get to that one or not without I may have to readjust the camera to get to one of these screws. <clears throat> See, it's, I had this, I, I, I loosened it up and straightened it up to put that one in. May have to do that again, I guess I will. So this has um, Allen screws on it. <clears throat> and, uh, this has Allen screws on it, so I'll go ahead and show what I'm doing instead of being Let's see if I can, I don't know if I have to loosen both sides or just one. The I have to take the antenna off too if I have to get to the other side. Let's see. Oh no, you don't have to have both sides. So I think I'll just kind of snug it back up enough to keep it right there. And it does come with an Allen wrench, which I haven't tried. Where, where was that thing? I guess it's in the box somewhere. Oh, the screws. It's in the bag with the screws. Uh, I didn't use those screws. Uh, well, they were too long for this, and I probably wouldn't use them anyway because they're those cheap old screws that you always get with stuff. That, you know, those heads strip out when you're trying to drive them the very first time. I use some of these black... Uh, a lot of people call them wood screw, uh, drywall screws, but I generally call them wood screws because that's what I use them for, and they're tough. They'll, they'll handle it. Well, you can break them when you're driving them with a drill, but uh, anyway, let's see. Anyway, I, that's my, you know, Allen wrench. I think I'm going to have to turn it back down to get to that other screw. I won't be uh, using screws again on that, you know, on that mic stand, so. And you can, I can adjust this once I figure out where I want to set it. I can, can adjust this. I think the best thing to do would be to put that Allen wrench. 
Well, for now, it would be really nice if I had that Allen wrench, uh, you know, twisty to this cable, uh, the one that came with it. But right now, it's handy. I mean, I've got that by my desk, but I definitely don't want to lose. I don't like leaving my tools out of their proper place, and I don't want to lose them, you know. <clears throat> and that would be my toolbox, you know. This is handy. This uh, I think this was given to me as a gift years ago for Christmas or something, but or a birthday. But that is a ratchet screwdriver that you know works just like your drill uh, driver tips. You know, I mean, it is the same tips, and so and it stores a bunch of them in there. And so uh, this this bigger handle, uh, and it being a ratchet, that's how I drove those in there. It's just plywood, but it wasn't hard at all. Um, a little hard to get started, but I got I don't want to rub that out. I got a, the worst splinter from that the first time I messed with it. It's such an old piece of plywood, it'll really grab, it'll really get you. Okay. Now let's see where I want to put this. I have to lean it against something now or it'll just fall over. Um thought maybe it would be in the picture, but it's really not. I can't get it over there where it's actually in the picture, but it's sort of in the picture. Let's see. Let me try something else. First, I gotta get this uh, camera. I'll just put it back up to normal. My first idea. Ah. This thing has got, it's real hard to move, and then all of a sudden there's a space in there where it, it just, you know, it will stay if you're careful, but it'll flop, you know, back and forth, up and down. <clears throat> okay, now, <clears throat> yeah, I, there's not really a place, even with these three legs, they're still always getting in the way of what you're trying to do. <clears throat> it's almost there, it's almost in the picture. I don't believe, yeah, I can't set it to control, I guess. Try this. There might be a way to do this. There we go. If you keep on trying, you might figure it out. Okay, now. I got a little toolbox for in-house tools right there. And that's my Allen wrench just goes with my real tools out, out in the garage. Got a whole set of, out, well, I've got a metric and American. That is metric. Luckily, I had, when I bought that tool kit, it had, it had, uh, it was a tool set of end wrenches. Had metric and American. I don't have a crescent wrench in here, though. I do have a, let's see if I can do it with these needle nose. I don't have much in here. Uh, I do have a, uh, oh, there's a hole in there. Stick a screwdriver in there. I have a, uh, one more. The one that'll fit in there, I don't, I'm afraid it'll bend it, and I don't want to bend it. I got this, I got uh, an, a straight one and a, yeah, that'll be a way to do it. No, let's do it this way. No, I don't like that. That's a flathead, and then the other one is a Phillips. I bought those by themselves because I needed a long screwdriver, and I think I found a set of two, you know, one of each. Can't get a hold. There's a little uh, thin nut that's not hex or anything. It's just it's kind of meant to be a finger screw uh, that fell out of the picture oh I see it's got to be back like that to be in the picture oh it's loose now okay I didn't think I ever got it loose anyway that's the only way that you know these mic clips will stay on there it's pretty uh where is it okay I'll show you <clears throat> this is how I kept I keep my, one of my cameras my tripod for one of my cameras. It, it's actually a stick off of a clothes tree that I have. 
that was it was split and it wouldn't stay on there. Well, actually, it would stay on there well enough. Anyway, I glued it up, and uh, I uh, I just put some rubber bands on here to make this stronger to hold it. Now let's get this off of here. And uh, and then I uh, put a pretty long screw in. Where are we? Pretty long screw in there. And this is one of those uh, one of those paper clips, but it's a giant one. And of course, you can see all the rubber bands. I actually bought those year, in like in 2000 on a mistake. I thought I was buying. Uh, I thought I was buying. Half, I just said half inch paper clips or three quarter or something. I didn't realize they were going to be that giant. I thought it meant like the length, you know, this way or something. Anyway, uh, I never had any use for them until I got <laughs> got this. Never had any paper folders that big that I wanted to clip. So, um, now here's my plan. Let's see if it works. There's one huge flaw in my plan, the cable. <laughs> it's not long enough to run down through there and it wouldn't go anyway with all that stuff. Oh, you're smart, huh? I measured this thing thinking it would fit just for, in my defense, there, there's a, a gasket there that is, making the hole smaller, but uh, it would fit over that, but uh, you're not getting it on there with that cable. I mean, well, actually it would almost fit with the cable. Oh wait, it does. It fits with the cable off to the side. So it's a bigger, a lot bigger hole than I thought it was. The only thing is it stops too short to stay on there, I think. If I can leave that little nut on there, I didn't tighten that very much and it fell. Uh, yeah, I don't want to break the, what's left of those legs, so let's do something different here. If I start pressing down on that, that's what I was fixing to do, was press down on it. Get this, set it on that board so I won't scratch up my table so bad. Now, let's see if I can... I'll use my keyboard tray to try and... I think I can just slide it on there. And if it doesn't, I, just, uh, I don't want to mess up this cable, that's for sure. Oh, well, it kind of goes. I don't think there's enough room to do that. Uh-uh. I was thinking it would just set on there with it standing up, you know. But the wire, even though there really is enough room the wire, I don't know if it'll show up in the camera. It goes straight to the, no, you can't see it. It goes straight to the middle. It comes through, up here it's narrower, and so it comes straight out of the middle when I put my finger up in there. You know, and also it would stop about right there where my finger is. Um, because the, the, it, uh, that's the, well, that's, there's a flange there where, the, where these, would probably be just deep enough for it to hang on if it wasn't for the, you can't really get it up that far enough with the cable without. See, these threads are pretty sharp. They would, uh, uh, they would end up cutting that in a short order, so I don't want to do that. But fret not, because <coughs> all is not lost. I think this clip is big enough to hold on <laughs> to that. <coughs> and with that rubber band on it, it should be strong enough to still hold it. So I didn't need to take that off, I don't think. So I'll put this back over there and get my... You know, anytime you put your, put your tools up thinking you're done with them, you always need them again. That's what I did. Yeah, I don't even know where the... Only thing is I didn't put up... Oh. <laughs> It's right there in my lap. Now I'm yanking my microphones off. So, get this back under here how I had it. There's only two of those darn things that are, uh, I'll show it in a minute maybe. One of them's held, well I had two of those legs, three of those legs held on by zip ties and what's left of the bracket. And now there's only two of them that are actually held on by the bracket. I'm going to have to get 
uh, I like using mic stands or either a tripod or the mic stand doesn't have as big of a footprint, you know, it, it can go in smaller areas. One thing about this is there's a lot of places right here in my room where it's actually kind of, it, now that the legs are broke off, I can get it where I really want it, you know, sometimes, but. Uh. <sighs> so. Um, oh, don't drop that. You have a hard time getting that. I did drop it, though. So. All right, now. Uh, make that big again. Make that hole up. There we go. Doesn't matter where it sets, just as long as I can get it timed up. I don't want to go out to the end of that. That would give so much leverage I would bend that screwdriver. Turn it some way that I can. Where's that hole at? There we go. It's really, this. these, these are so thin, you can't get a hold of them. Hardly at all. Ah. There we go. It's one of the most aggravating things. I used to do sound for bands pretty much throughout the whole 90s. Well, I started learning, doing it in, in 1983, but I did sound for bands throughout the 90s, almost every weekend. And one of the worst things is when that's loose and it won't quit. Uh, you know, going back, you're, you can't get your, and if you try to just tighten it by this, you'll break it every time. Like, you know, you just, crank down on it because if you ain't got any tools in about all you can do is grab it by the this to get some leverage and then you'll end up breaking your your mic clip <clears throat> they're just plastic so that's tight enough let's see now where's the camera let's see if we can uh, yeah i didn't really tighten it up very much let's tighten it up a little more than that we don't want it going walkers on us oh yeah i didn't have it I mean, I'll end up having to move it again probably to adjust it, so let's don't overdo it. And you know, this is, this part is, is aluminum. You know, they say it's aluminum and when you're looking at the ad, the front's plastic, the, uh, as usual, you know, the antenna is just really weak plastic, easy to break. But this part is just plastic. And that's, that's the thing you want to be alum strong, aluminum, you know, but this whole mount, can't tell by sound. It, you can tell when you feel of it and when you, wait a minute. I could have been wrong. It's very light, it's, that bottom plate is not plastic. I went on and on about how that was plastic in my first video. It doesn't sound like plastic when you tap on it. I thought it was, I mean, usually. You could tell so easy. Problem is, I can't see. You know, you can usually tell by looking at the finish of the edges and stuff. And I didn't get my mag I can't see good anymore, and I didn't get my magnifying glass out. I think maybe the whole bracket is aluminum after all. It more sounds like metal. So this part's metal. The the barrel and this part here is aluminum, uh, which is what they said it was. And now you could tell it's aluminum. If it was steel, it'd be a lot heavier. And that this. Okay, this is not plastic. I believe it is aluminum. I think. Only problem I've got is uh, there we go. The only thing is now my camera's upside down. But I've already had to do this once. Uh, you just loosen these screws right here on both there's two, on both sides, and then you can uh, t turn the barrel. See, that's the way it came, you know, expecting you to mount it like that, which is usually the way you'd mount it, you know. But I had I had to turn it since I wanted to. And you don't want that. That's where the speaker is and where you put the SD card. You don't want that up at top, you know, no matter what. Well, it'd be upside down. Your picture would be upside down anyway. And you, there's not a provision in the software to flip it, so I don't think. But uh, so anyway, that and don't over-tighten your antenna. You will break that. So I'm going to have to do this again with the... Uh, with the uh, head, that's staying in there pretty good with my rubber bands and all. If I was rough with it, it would, wouldn't stay. Let's see, what's better? That or like that? Yeah, I think it's better to let it slide on down. 
and then I can adjust it from there. First I'll get the camera back right set up and then I'll adjust the uh, angle where I want it to aim, where I figure out where I think, wherever I want to set it while I'm doing my testing. And you know, this may seem a little time consuming here showing all this, but the, one of the biggest problems that people, uh, on the reviews of all these cameras like this, that people were talking about was, well I'm looking in the wrong screw, was they, they uh, it was upside down for them and they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to adjust it, you know. So, and so I actually had a heads up on that. Uh, so when I looked it over a bit, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I see the adjustments," you know. But I might have had a little, had to, well, when I first saw it, I didn't see the one to spin the head, and I was like, "Oh great, now what am I going to do?" And I think I said something about it in my first video again. Okay, so and this cable's gonna gotta be careful when you start twisting this because it's twisted on the cable. Oh, that's twisting in my mount. Okay. Let me get to both of these screws. There's one on each. Some of them you'd only have one screw to turn, and some of them you have two. Oh, that's the wrong spot again. Oh, yeah, this one, where the antenna is, you still can't. Oh, you can't really get to it. Even though the antenna. Whoops, I did it again. Even though you take the antenna off, this Allen wrench doesn't doesn't make it even on the short end. But I think if you just loosen it more, it will do, do the job. Let's see. Yeah. So you don't really have to turn that one. Uh, I think I saw somebody complaining about that. Probably didn't ever try with, you know, to see if it would just do it. Well, we'll say one thing. Now when I want to tighten this one up, the antenna is going to be in the way. So I better pre-tighten it, and then maybe I can finish it from the other side. Get it just snug where I can still move it. Let's see. But I want to make sure that I get it uh, more really straight. I'm going to go by, well, no, I don't think I'll go by the words on this side. Go by the speaker. Yeah, I think, I think going by the speaker is the best way to get it straight. I can't show everything I'm doing because one thing that keeps moving, but I got to be able to see what I'm doing myself. There's <laughs> so many Allen screws so close together that you can easily grab hold of the wrong one. So this, uh, see, when I do g hopefully get to take this thing outside, if the Wi-Fi is going to work good enough, uh, when I get to take it outside to test it, then I'll I'll take it on this and set it, uh, you know, like different places. I either, I'll either going to put it, depending on the Wi-Fi, I really, since it's such a wide angle lens, oh, it will go in there. The, the Allen wrench will go in there. It's just under that. With that antenna off, it goes just under it. I just wasn't uh, looking at it straight or something. So... Uh, Gonna get it straight to my mount, but that you can I can just turn that at will, you know. And uh, let's see, where's that other one? And then I'll set this. I think I'll go ahead and set it where I think I'm gonna have it for right now. And uh, I want it within my reach, so I'll just point it at myself, I think, and uh, and we'll see. I'm not going to be able to adjust it until I get it turned on, I don't think. It's going to be an awful close close-up. I think that'll be all right, though. Okay, yeah, I can reach it, and I can put myself in the view of it. So I won't... Uh, yeah, everything's tight enough for me to use it. Okay, so let's turn it on again. Um, and uh, where's my... Oh, I didn't put the antenna on it yet. So the antenna, I'm not going to turn the uh, thing around again. I would just finger tight it because uh, you can break that thing. And don't grab it out here on the, you know, anywhere but right at, there's a, you can feel the, you know, grooves, little small grooves in it. And then uh, you can turn 
when you want to bend it the way you need to bend it, like up, don't turn it by the, there's a hinge on it. Uh, don't turn it past the hinge, you get down close and uh, get a hold of it that way so you don't break it up. I've, uh, you know, your, your router, my routers, my routers have the same type of deal and they're a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger and they're not strong enough. So definitely want to watch out on that. Uh-oh, it won't stay there. Okay, let's go here, I guess. Wait. Uh, I wanted to have it to where I could reach it, but not. There we go. We need more than one support for it. it it's not sturdy at all. Let's see. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, now maybe I've got it. That's gonna be a super close fit. I didn't really want that, but. Well, let's see. Let's don't try to put it there then, because that's gonna be ridiculous. Maybe if I move this thing here, put it up there like that. There, finally. Uh, yeah, since it's got such a, I'm gonna leave it right where it is and then when I get it turned on, then I'll know where to aim it. Now I have to put my, I've got my cable off in the floor now. I think that'll work out now. Okay, let's see. Plug in the Ethernet first, and then when it comes up, it'll be online. Okay. Not online as the Internet, but online as uh, on my local network. Okay. Yes, I'm ready to turn it on. Okay, I'm plugged it all in. It makes a little ticking sound in the speaker, because this is a two-way audio camera when you do that. And let me get on the network now. I would have turned the camera at what I was doing, but I was just fumbling and having trouble, so I don't think it was anything to see. All right, now I'm going to turn on the only viewer I really have that can view this thing without locking up my computer, basically. Or, and I guess if I go too long, it will. I told that story at the beginning here. Let's see. I always forget the letters. ONVIF viewer. I finally realized, well, why don't I search for camera? It'll probably come up. <clears throat> this is all brand new to me. I've never used any of this ONVIF stuff. I didn't even know it existed until I started researching security cameras. Okay, so there it is. Now, when it comes up, that's what it did. It must take a little while to get it completely booted up. It, uh, it did that on the other cable, but then after it ran a little bit, it, uh, but it's funny because when it first comes up, it's in this full screen mode and it makes it look like the video is much taller than it is wide. But if you like click on, let's see what happens if you click on view, if you click on view or settings, if you go to, then it goes like this. And now it looks wider than it is tall. Of course, it's shrunk down to fit in there because this is way bigger than my 1920 by 1080, you know, video resolution on my 24 inch monitor. So it's made to be on a bigger screen than, uh, you want to look at it that way, then my uh, uh, <coughs> made to be on a bigger screen than mine. You know, it would work. This would work on a big screen TV and not be too small of a resolution. I want to see what happens when you do that. <coughs> So if you go all around, see, look at the, that wide angle is just a wild. And of course it gets, uh, actually, normally it usually looks very, it's usually round on the left side more than the right, but this time you see how it's round. It's fisheye, the fisheye look, but you can actually see that my monitor, I mean, my monitor is more than a 45 degree uh, 
you know, behind, it's like behind that camera. I mean, I've never had one a camera with a wide, a wide angle like this. It's 100 degrees wide angle is what it is. So, and, and I thought, well, you know, after I saw the, how sharp the picture is compared to my cameras, it's a little fuzzy there on this viewer. Now that I'm uh, looking at it real, at a close-up view of me, I notice that when you're further, a little further away, just another foot, it doesn't, you don't really see the fuzziness. Like I can kind of see fuzziness, in my shirt and stuff. But uh, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't intend to buy that wide of an angle. I, I was thinking I knew the the numbers of the angles in my head, but I didn't. Uh, uh, I don't know what's considered normal. Uh, 90 degrees is the one I've seen most common. I remember that. But I, I was worried, you know, I knew that uh, staying on that big picture would be too much for the computer if I left it too long because I did that one day. Uh, so I went over here, but that was still, you see, well, it does, see, I'm not really responding. My arm's not really responding. It's, it's I don't know, maybe it's already beginning to act up. Let's see what's going on. Let's see. Okay, everything to do with ONVIF is not giving any trouble to the system, though. I typed in ONVIF and all that's everything that has to do with it running, all the processes. Uh, not giving any trouble, not that much memory or anything. So let's leave it like that and go back to the uh, view. Let's see how it does. Yeah, it, it's set on 15 frames per second. That's just great. I wouldn't try to do more than that on, without a 5 megapixel resolution. I'd have a resolution on streaming. This is streaming over the wire. Now, Wi-Fi is a whole different thing. I don't... See, I had Wi-Fi working in this app, and it is sending out a Wi-Fi signal. Okay, so now you can see that it's using 4% of the CPU and using only 67 megabytes of memory, though, but it's using a lot of CPU to play that H.265. And my system is, uh, let's get out of there before it's too late. I'm going to close it. Well, let's don't close the app if I can. Oh, if I can, I want to, let's see if it'll go back to not giving my machine trouble. Yeah, it looks like it's coming back down. Memory's still 68 megabyte, but that's not much out of 4 gigabyte, you know. I'll leave that like that so I can quickly check. Now, uh, well, I opened up my web browser last time because I needed to because I couldn't remember the IP address. Oh, I keep forgetting where I'm supposed to click. That seems okay if I leave it like that. Well, that's how I locked up the computer. I'm going to, whoops, I almost closed my monitor. I'm going to close this app for now. <clears throat> and uh, go ahead and close this. I won't let, a, you know, have a lot of stuff run in here. And uh, close that. Then I'll get the web browser opened up. Let me check my sound. While we'll, I'll go ahead and click on it, and while I'm waiting on it to open up, I'll check my sound and my video. See, I can see my video kind of up on that laptop up there. I can just glance up and see that it's moving, but I don't don't hear the sound unless I turn it. I got it muted, you know, <clears throat> so that it won't come back through my mics. Uh. Okay, oh yeah, now this will lock up my com my computer in no time, so I gotta get off. Oh no, it's on, the, this is where I was. The monitor one, that's the big, oh, how weird. To go to that other page was, you just went to it. This one I can't stay on. Now the one I was on, go to settings, and then I was in image, which doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd think it'd be video, something to do with video, because that's what it is. I was uh, looking through the uh, adjustments here, and that's in, and and I had the LNVF here running. Let's see, it's full-time video; it's just not a large view. But those two together definitely crapped me out. But I don't care to mess with that right now. It's all working fine for that right now. What I actually want to see is network. Oh, I bet I can look at the. I can get the IP address from here. No, I can't. Oh, system. Device information, maybe that'll tell me. I know it'll tell me the uh, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, start time. <clears throat> I thought it would just give me the IP address. There's the IP right there. That's the wired IP. <clears throat> so it doesn't seem to be showing the wireless IP. 
let's see if I'm just missing it. How about Wi-Fi? Okay, so um, yeah, it doesn't give that in there for some reason. Let's go back to network and see if I missed it in there. No, I'm not missing it in there. Oh, I know how I can. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I just want to see if you can figure it out from this. No. And right now, the only thing I see is my router, those top two, and then uh, that that one there called Star Blazers. It's been there forever. Now, if we refresh, yeah, there's some more. There's usually like 15 to 20 things showing up during, uh, maybe it's just mostly during the day. I don't know. But a lot of them are printers and stuff. So anyway, I don't need to, uh, I don't, I was just wondering if it had it in there. ONVIF, that tells you the port. P2P, somewhere you see a bunch more ports. I don't remember that now. Oh, here they are in the network. The, click on the network tab. Then you see the different ports you could access it from. So um, what I'm going to do, I might actually try that again this time. But first, let's go to go to that camera. Where well, I got the camera? Okay, because I saved the yeah 110 0 0.110. Now let's see if we can go go to the wireless. Make sure it's up and broadcasting like it should be. I don't think I need to be in for both of them, so I'm going to close that other one before this one even gets loaded. Oh yeah, now this is what I got the last time. Uh, I guess I'm still in. The, yeah, I'm still in the uh, desktop. Uh, it's Chinese, is what it is, and it does nothing. Nothing in there works. Uh, Let's see what happens if I reload. Maybe it'll bring up. This is weird. Uh, let me think. Last time I got that by going, um, when I had it unplugged, had the wired unplugged. Maybe you can't go to the wireless admin unless you're unplugged the cable. It's not going there. But if you go to the uh, the wired address, the other IP, uh, with, uh, with the ca plug cable unplugged, you get that page on, that I... Uh, just went I was just on now it's not showing up it does that it must have been from cash then so it's not going there at all evidently let's try uh, getting rid of that extra stuff that could have been the problem I wouldn't see why you couldn't go there now it says welcome but you can't uh, you know nothing's working You're, this is like I think this is from cash too in my browser cache yep it was so um, Let's see, let's try port 80 and make sure it's just not, I got to thinking maybe it's because it's going to the uh, SSL port. No, that didn't make, that just got that page I was just on. So I guess I have to unplug the wired connection to get to the wireless. I didn't realize that. I don't think, the, I've read and read that manual, and I, I am bad, I'm not good at following instructions, and I'm not good at remembering them as fast as I read them, but I've studied the darn thing, and I begin to get things, you know, <clears throat> uh, the, the gist of it anyway. <clears throat> so since we're right here, I'm just going to unplug the Ethernet cable, and uh, see if we come up with our... Uh, Our page now <clears throat> this is how I want to use it as a matter of fact if I can't use it on wireless I don't think I want it the camera I'll send it back and say it doesn't work right now there we go now you want you to log in I like to never figure it out uh, I tried I went straight into my router the first time uh, and I didn't see any other IP but the wired IP uh, the first time I tried to get on the wireless and then uh, the next day or two later uh, this happened, you know, like it should. Okay, see, now everything's fine. Can't stay there again. This is wireless. But did you see it looked okay for a minute there? And this is on wireless. That's the first time I've seen it do that. And it's not on wired because, let me do that one more time just for a minute. It's okay. It's actually about, it's maybe a little ghosting more than on the wire, but now that's encouraging. I was afraid that it was... Uh, not going to be working well, right, well enough to use on the wireless. Now, how far away I can take it from the routers is the next thing I want to see. Of course, it's nighttime now, so there's no point in 
I don't want to, I don't want to run around in the dark, so I'm going to even try to do that tonight. I don't think I'm really near getting near doing that yet anyway. Let's see. Media image. Okay, that's where I can see the little preview. Let's see if it's uh, it's work. It's not real bad. It looks pretty much the same as it did. And I don't want to mess around with changing things in here right now because that all looks good enough. I mean, it, to me, it's a little too bright. I might take a little bit of the brightness out of it, you know, but I'm not even going to do that until I'm through with uh, seeing how the wireless does. So now I can move this camera as far as, but you still have to have power, you know, you have to have the power adapter. There's no batteries with it or anything. So, um, but my cable is 9 to 10 foot. I could move it across the room. Uh, and I may do that. I don't know. We'll see. But, oh, now it's not. Uh, oh, there it goes. It was a little, it was a little delayed. I'm waving so much, I don't know which one's which now. Okay, let it settle down. Okay, left hand. Yeah, it's delayed now. I mean, I've known uh, all this, the last about three years, I've been streaming with my cameras, and they're two megapixels, right, right out, two megapixels. This is five megapixels, so uh, I knew that it wouldn't be, yeah, now it's, okay, right hand. Yeah, it's behind by, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds or more. So, uh, what was it I wanted to do? I need to use, oh, I want this IP address. Yeah, my browser's, the, the problem is the browser, not the wireless. I just realized when I try to select that, it, it was not working. So, uh, I just need to get off of that before it's too just close it. I wanted to close it on a different. If I don't, if I let it keep going, let me see if I can get to the. It's not. It's not responding to me trying to close it. So. Uh, I was trying to go to a different section, you know, but it won't. And see, I'm even, even when I click on the, uh, to go to, I need to put, that does help sometimes. I keep forgetting. Normally I keep a little, there's a little icon you can put up in the top, you know, menu bar, toolbar. Yeah, the mouse is not working good. <clears throat> um, I, let's see, I clicked on, oh, okay, I'm back over there finally. I was going to check to see if my sound was even, if my stream's even still working, but let's just go ahead and see if we can get Fire. Oh, I think Firefox might have shut down after all. The mouse is not working right. It's got some weird thing thing in the cursor. I, I, I've seen that before, but I don't really know what it's like. Oh, Firefox. There we go. Yeah, see, that's everything that's, uh, the processes that are running with Firefox. Let's see if I can kill it without having to force kill it. I mean, kill kill it I'm just ending the process if it doesn't respond for a little you know after a little bit and sometimes the last time it wouldn't for nothing there we go if it won't do it if it can't do it then you can still right click on that process and and hit kill <clears throat> uh, sometimes it'll let you click it and but it still okay it went it still uh, won't do it if it's been over about 30 seconds you might as well go ahead and Cause you've got you're in a you're in a, a rush to to kill it before it kills your computer before it uses up all mostly Firefox tends to use start using up all your memory it's not the CPU usage that gets to super high it's the memory. Okay now I want to see if I'm still working okay, and I think I will I'm not sure what she uses the most. Let's get my sound going up. Boy, that's hard. Dang it, that's hard to do. I can't. I can't see it. I can't get the mouse to go where I want it to go on that laptop. Okay. Well, my stream's fairly well behind what I'm doing, so that's actually to my advantage. When but uh, go back on the SM58.
and uh, it was easier to uh, do my checks on my audio when I had my laptop down here on the tray, but I'm using it in the server, and it, uh, I can't. I have to leave the lid open. I can't shove the tray in at night to go to bed, and I, and it was, I could hear it. You know, it's, it makes it makes enough noise that I could hear it. So now I do see that I, it's finally caught up with where I switched the mic. So let's see. Okay, yeah, I believe I'm back. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is stay on the desktop, go over here and open Ovian VIF Viewer. Let's see, 110, yeah, that's the IP, so I can still type, I can remember to type it in even if it's not in my clipboard. I think I got it in there, but that's not opening too quick. Sometimes uh, when Firefox gets like that, uh, you end up having to reboot to get the computer to run, block, but you know, get back to normal again. So that's uh, uh, evidently. I kind of figure well, that was weird. I had entered to open that app, and it it took and it went out of the. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I won't do anything else yet. I'm just going to close that. Even close that search. It went back to nothing in there like you're ready to search again. And normally what it does is, just, well, I think it just stays there. Oh, application finder is not responding. I'm going to say, of course, quit. Now let's see if my app, yeah, see the machine's not recovered yet. Yeah, I see it was still opening. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open it full, full screen. You know, I think I had thought I had discovered that this resolution was taller than it was wide and that they were writing it back to me backwards in the app, you know, the phone, the phone's app, the phone, the camera's app. But I realized finally when I went to the, uh, now, oh, it, well, it wouldn't be showing the wired connection because um, it's uh, not hooked up. So let's add another camera. Let's see. It kind of, it, it actually, you can play them both at the same time, I think. It's what, it, it, no matter whether what view you're in, you're still getting that little thumbnail view, but it's a pretty big thumbnail. Yeah, this time I'm just going to change to 110. And uh, I can always change it back when I want to do wired. Now let's see. All you do is, it doesn't have an enter button or anything. Oh, you click on view and then it starts trying to load it. So let's see if it can do it. I did see it do it once, and then the next time I tried to do it, it wouldn't work. I think I was trying to do it with, I think I had the cable plugged in, and I was trying to go to the wi wireless, back and forth between the wired and the wireless. I just now realized, you know, when you got the cable plugged in, you can't go to the wireless because uh, I was trying to do it in Firefox. So let's see if it works. The password's the same. Uh, it does have password in it. It's a I haven't changed them yet. They're just, you know, admin, admin. So it's taking, this thing really does take quite a while to load the first time you, when you put in a new camera or do any changes or anything. So that doesn't mean necessarily right now that it's not going to work. But sometimes, you know, you never know. I hate it when something takes a long time to load because you wait and wait and wait. And finally, you know, you give up and it might have been fixing to work or you wait and wait and wait and it never does work and then you're aggravated. So um, I'll give it a little more time because I know that's how it does. I can't really, uh, yeah, I can't look at it in the web browser. Uh, and it could be because I'm running Fedora 28. I, I, I knew it, but I forgot really just out of my mind that it's not updating uh, anymore. I guess it's not getting any at all. I thought it was still getting security updates, but I saw something the other day. I ran across you know, a Fedora page or something that said, Oh, it popped up. I had somehow I had gotten, I've got two or three. Um, my system's still running pretty slow. I better not try to do anything. Um, DNF Dragora is the default, but I had installed a couple of other package managers. And I don't know, I opened something that I had, I didn't open it on purpose. I clicked on something of, of my 
apps, you know, in my downloads that made it open up. And uh, then it and then it popped up the message saying, you know, well, you're not getting any more updates and you should update the system. Do you want to go ahead and do it? And then I was like, wait a minute, that's not DNF. And I thought, I don't want to do it right now, you know. And then then I went to look and I was like, oh, yeah, 30, I, I knew, you know, that th I saw that 31 was out and I downloaded it. So 28, 29, 30, 31, I'm pretty far behind. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look to me like it wants to work. Okay, 192.168.110.8080. I think you still use the same port too. Eighty eighty, and I know the password's right. So why did, one time it'll work and the next time it won't? Let's try closing the app and open it back up. There is something I read in the uh, uh, to do this. Is, it's a br pretty new app, and, and it's just really not. It's not finished at all. It's just kind of the beginning stages of that little application. I read on their GitHub or whatever it is where they had it. So I, I downloaded it. It wasn't in the package manager. Oh, and I, that's something I was thinking I ought to do. <coughs> Go ahead and uh, see if I haven't looked uh, in the package manager. That I, If I did, I don't remember. <coughs> there may be stuff in, uh, in the package manager. Fedora that would play it, but me being behind, <coughs> I probably have <coughs> the early support for H two sixty five. Why am I seeing the? Uh, oh, because I just did that. Okay, I was like, why am I seeing the application finder? And I don't know why because up in my preview for my stream, I was like, I th thought th I was thinking that's like two three minutes ago, but I just don't do that to get this open. It's just not loading it. And I have seen it do it. So uh, uh, I don't want to leave this running because now that I know that it uses, could possibly, you know, use so many. Oh, I can't see the setting thing anymore. This is kind of a funky app. Now I can when I do that. View. See, and that splits it when you do that. Settings. Pretty weird. Yeah, there, it's not really completely. And the guy said it wasn't. He said there he would, said it acts kind of funky. Like one time it'll load the, uh, he said the browser, not that he meant the web browser. I think he meant this browser. He says one time when you open it up, it won't show it under some, certain circumstances. Like, like if you go there, oh, that's the device information. Somewhere I saw, thought I saw something here about the, I guess not, the writer of the app. But anyway, I guess I just saw it on this page where I downloaded it. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not going to sit there and wait on it. I'm pretty sure it's not working. See if everything looks okay here. Okay, that's closed like it should. Everything looks good now. I don't really like to open up. Uh, the, it's a DNF is a really heavy resource user user. user. Uh, so I don't like to open it up anymore, and I have to in a live stream, but I will go ahead and do it. Anyway, I wanted to get this camera all set up and running and then deal with, you know, once I realized it, I did realize, realized it kind of really hit me in the beginning of get, trying to get this camera set up. I want to get it set up and everything if I possibly can, uh, and then deal with updating my operating system and all. Stuff. I really just need to. What I really need want to do is go ahead and get my server I bought set up and going, and then, and I'll be using it as my main operating system. Then I can update this, and I can actually make a video of doing it because I can stream from the server. Then use this to stream my. Uh, every my stream is working fine, other than if I overwhelm the system. Use this to stream the setup of the server and then use the server to stream the update of this is my plan. But I'm sure you need to have more troubles that I don't know for sure if they are. <laughs> it might be because of the age of my system. But, you know, sometimes when you update, the newer versions of your software might be have, still have more bugs in them because they're newer. And you might end up with more trouble. I've had that happen to me more than once. And DNF is the slowest thing in the world to load up and everything. That's That's normal for it. This is actually seems slower than normal, but <clears throat> I already have my stream go down on me once tonight, and I don't want to have to 
stop and start again, but if I have to, it'd be better than having it go down on me. Okay, O-N-V-I-F. Let's just see what happens. That did change. You know, uh, no, I, I hit enter like I always do, and that was not working in Dia, uh, Dragora. But you know what? I think it's working now because it did change. Yeah, it said search results, so it's actually doing that. But it's crazy still. That's good. That's I'm I'm really happy with that, that you can hit enter like a normal, any other normal program. But you should, you know, in, in all the other previous package managers, you could pick one or all of the categories to search in. You have to do them one at a time, like right here. You can't go into the settings. Let's say I added that to say, you know, by default, search all categories. You know, you just can do that. Descriptions, summaries, outside descriptions there. I don't guess there's anything to do with ONVIF. That is the right program. Let's see. Name. Yeah, ONVIF. Okay. Not finding anything yet. That doesn't mean you really just have to keep on trying. And sometimes it has a little spinning wheel to tell you something's going on, and sometimes it doesn't. And so you don't know if it's time to give up and go on to the next thing or not. So. There's a spinning wheel that time. So you got to wait. For sure you want to wait now, you know, until it quits spinning. And you may get something back. <clears throat> but why in the world would you want to have those all separated? Why wouldn't you? Uh, there, I can see where there might be a time here and there when you might need to, you know, search one section at a time. But really... I've always just set mine to search all all available data, you know, and it always worked perfectly for me. And I uh, can't think of the names of the other package managers. Okay, yeah, there we go. We got something. Now, well, you, now, it's usually your last least likely way to find it is in file names because figuring out file names is hard, you know. All right, what do we got? G P P G G P it's G Streamer. Okay, but it has bad plugins. It says there package contains plugins that aren't tested well enough or the code is not good enough quality. That's funny that they've that's always been uh you'll always see plugins good, bad, free, bad free <laughs> uh that are available and I've gone back and forth between I usually tried to stay away from the ones that are bad, and then when I couldn't get something to play that I wanted to play, I finally tried them, and it worked, you know. So I don't know. Uh, don't really remember having trouble. Of course, sometimes you get so many things that are, might be questionable installed, and you decide to install it, and then you don't know what's giving you trouble if you do have trouble, especially when it's months or a year down the road. But uh, ONVIF, that's the only thing. Oh, Zone Minder. So, I, yeah, Zone Minder is compatible. That's a security uh, camera software uh, and uh, it is compatible with ONVIF and v, V4L video for Linux it'll do USB cameras and I started out with the USB cameras years ago they used to have a, a live version that you know you could download the ISO but I actually recently installed it on my server my web server when it was when I was running my web server on the Acer laptop before the battery died on it and uh I messed. I, you have to follow the really detailed instructions and do it all in the command line. And I messed up something. I misunderstood uh, the username thing that was in the instructions, and you actually were supposed to use like Z Z Minder or whatever. And I put my name, my username of my machine in there, and uh, it 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 wouldn't start up. Zone Minder wouldn't start up. It broke. He broke everything. You know. I think that was, well, I'm not sure. There was a bunch of it. I looked at back at, I was making a video, so I was looking at that video yesterday. I was thinking about trying to fix it for this so I'd have a good viewer. But, well, I tried to, I was going to boot up that laptop and see if the Firefox on it would uh, play, you know, the video better. But that laptop is just, it won't even hardly run anymore. It, it kept rebooting. You sit there and run a little while and then reboot and stuff. So, And last night I had it running and I ran updates on it. And it updated everything perfectly. Ran all night. I was thought I was going to get to this last night, and I ended up not ever getting to it. Uh, 
and uh, <clears throat> and it ran all all yesterday evening, all until I went to bed. I shut it down. Mike keeps on sagging. It falls out of the spot where I have have it kind of hooked on my rack. Um, let's see. So that did not find me. Let's try some. Well, let's try descriptions again. See if I, I was just no. See, there's just nothing in the in the. If you look at it that way, okay. Um, I win VIF. What's the other thing I was thinking about? Um, oh, H265. See what apps might, maybe I'll find a player that, that's just made for H265 or that says it has that support. VLC is supposed to be, it's the number one, supposedly the best player to use. I was looked it up for H265, a video. But uh, it won't. My my VLC won't play it at all. It can't play it. Can't play the files. I downloaded some from the camera. And uh, so my next step is to, well, I will. If the if the wireless will play good in H two sixty five, then I want to stay with that because it's. I mean, I might try. I may go ahead and try out H two sixty four. I can do that. <clears throat> But um, but I don't think I want to stick with it. I've used it for you know quite several years, and I know I kind of kind of know uh, you know five megapixel video in H.264 is going to use a lot of resources. So supposedly H.265 uses half the resources, half the bandwidth, and less file size. You know, but uh, it's not well. It's not doing that on this machine. You know. So uh, and it, it may just, I'm really thinking it may really be because it's got the introductory version of it, you know, like uh, the, the uh, decoders and everything. Let's see. Live five 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 Devel, but I don't want development. Let's see. Tools RTSP streaming tools. That'll be two different versions. The way this program lays out the versions is just pain, and it's having to page over there manually to see that stuff instead of bringing it on in where you can see it. If you bring it on in, then it'll just move again. So RTSP streaming, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's just... Used to build streaming applications. Well, I'm not going to be building any applications on it. I'll do that. H two sixty three though it doesn't say two sixty five. So that's before H two sixty four. That's old anyway. <clears throat> okay, so uh, of course, if I can't. I guess what I could do, if it works okay in H.264, then I can just start with that, and then uh, when I get my machines all updated, I can always switch to H switch the camera to H.265. Um, let me think. Right now, I can't think of any other thing I would want to look for. I looked for ONVIF. And look for H65. That's all I can think of right now. So let's close that. <clears throat> uh, this little uh, ONVIF viewer is the best option I have. I don't know why I can't get the Wi-Fi to work now. Doesn't make sense. I'm almost certain I had it working before. I thought I had it. No, maybe I didn't have it working with you know wired and wireless plugged in. Definitely doesn't want to do it. I don't want to come in. Unless it doesn't need that port 8080 on the end of it. Um, the wire does. It wouldn't work without it. Yeah, I see it immediately doesn't work then. Okay. Hmm. 
try that again. I don't think it would help to could try the different port. Like what is it? Five, five, four or something. Now I don't remember. I think it's five fifty four, but it's probably four fifty five. Oh, uh, that's the RTSP port. But I don't think I didn't, I don't know if this could do that or not. This player. I'm going to try. I'm going to let it sit there like that. And uh, let's see, I want to go to a setting so that it'll still try to load over there in that little preview. Let it keep trying this time because sometimes it fuels me. And if I let it run a while, it actually ends up working. <clears throat> I do have an app on the tablet that'll work. You know, that's the other thing I, I was planning on testing. So maybe I should just go to the tablet. But first, let's... Uh, get in there yeah okay you know that works that didn't ask me to log it didn't used to ask me to log in twice in a row like that okay so it's working just fine it's actually looking good but I can't stay on it I know that can't stay on any any of the viewers in the browser I wanted to go to the uh, port Go where I can see the ports. Okay, the main port for you know logging in is port eighty, and is there somewhere else where it tells you that eighty eighty is for the stream, and then RTSP is five five four, RTMP is uh, what nineteen thirty five. I haven't even tried that one. Okay, that's not working. So let's try five five four. I just out of a guess. Let's see. Oh, you'd probably have to put, or uh, well, let's just do it. It might actually sense what kind of protocol you're doing yeah that doesn't work we'll try putting rtsp in there that'll tell us right past no not f rtsp okay no that won't work okay so you don't put it's just for http I always want to hit enter because I think you need to. I just do it. Well, it's not coming in. I do not understand that one at all. So I'm going to quit trying on that. Um, oh, I think it's, yeah, ONVAF port. If you're using ONVAF, it's 8080. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So I had that right in the first place. Works on the wired, but not on the wireless for some reason. <coughs> Um, oh, thought of a good reason why. No, because this machine doesn't have wireless, but that shouldn't matter. It should should be going through the router still. Shouldn't be trying to go, you know, machine to machine. I mean, phones can do that kind of stuff, but okay. Well, let's close this. Okay, one ten. I think it's still in that program in the router. Okay, now. I'm going to get to the camera here. Okay, now I guess I'll, oh, since I'm going to start moving around. Okay, let's close this. Okay, 110. I think it's still in that program in the router. Okay, now I'm going to get to the camera here. Okay, now I guess I'll, oh, since I'm going to start moving around, I'll get on the other, on the wireless mic. <clears throat> and, um, uh, I uh, put my little neck support back down there because I'm going to have to move around here. And, uh, yeah, i got to remember that everything is supported by that. Okay. Um, i got to get my... In order to use that tablet, i got to get my... Uh, oh, let me... What I'll do is I will get the audio playing on the laptop and then mute it with the button on the front so that I can still check my sound. And then I'll use the wireless keyboard and mouse on the tablet now instead of the... Uh... <clears throat> Let's get this tablet. This is a nice tablet. Um, let's see. Well, I don't actually... Yeah, I can't use the... Well, I can plug the... Yeah, I can plug that 
charger into the adapter here. Um, this is a 10 inch tablet. I got my mom. Uh, it's only 99 bucks a couple years ago or maybe three now, I don't know. Um, but uh, it's, one, it's one of those Chinese tablets, but it's been great. Um, eight core with four gig of RAM, I believe it is. Yeah, now see, I can plug this power cable that I think, no, I still have it in my lap. This power cable into the other one and it will power the, uh, what it will do is it'll power that dongle. It won't power the laptop while it's, if it's on your software on, on your machine as to what can it can it will do, but I figured out what it will do is power the uh, dongle, but not the whole tablet. Uh, I'm sticking this twisty thing on in there so that it will Let's see. So I can set this over there on the side table where I can still see it, uh, but I can control it with the mouse and the keyboard. I can't, I don't like touch screens. I can't type on a touch thing for saving my life. So. Uh. Now, let's see. Oh, I didn't turn it on yet. Anyway, it'll power the dongle to help save battery at least. Uh, it won't charge the battery or, or power the tablet. But actually, that tablet, when I've got that, <clears throat> I don't really, it'll go for, it'll go easily eight hours anyway. So it even I think even if I was using the wireless dongle for, you know, I could get, I'd, I would probably get six or eight hours out of it anyway. <clears throat> but the other day I had it on for eight hours, I think, or six hours. And, uh... I forget it didn't go down for that much at all. So, you know, it was pretty amazing how well it does for an eight core ARM processor. Come a long way on those. I never knew where ARM processors came from. I just happened to find a video a week or two ago. They were developed in England back in the, the beginning of the computer, day, you know, home computer days. Uh, I forgot the name of the company now, but. Uh, Anyway, they were made and, you know, developed for, uh, actually, they had a lot more small devices, competing devices back then than I ever realized. They had a, they had little things that were, they kind of started out being glorified calculators. Well, they started out being calculators. Like, I still have my, this is, of course, from the 80s, but I still have my TI, uh, I was going to look at the name, number of it. Uh, Texas Instruments BA-35 Solar. Still works just as good. Well, once in a while it'll glitch up, but, I, you know, everything does. But uh, still work. I'm going to say it still works as good as the day I bought it back in the 80s and uh, never put a battery in it because it don't even use batteries. You can't put a battery in it. It's, it's The solar now, okay, tell me this. In the 80s, if they developed a solar panel that can run this this calculator uh, for all these years. We're getting up oh, 30 some odd years now. <clears throat> Why can't they make bigger solar panels that can put out more, way more power than what they have made? Why not? I think they could if they wanted to. Now they might be expensive, but uh, that little bitty strip right there. And so this is right here what sold me on solar back then. And the, when did I buy this? I don't know if it was 83, 85, somewhere around in there. I used to use it at work. I kept it in my toolbox to figure. I was a tool maker and I had to figure complicated math that I could never do in my head or on, or on paper <clears throat> to, to do things, to close tolerance. Within, um, well, generally it was 10 to 15 thousands. Some things were even two thousands. Uh, well, so anyway, back to the computers. Uh, <clears throat> keep getting mixed up about which mouse I want. Okay, so I want. Uh, oh, my whole plan 
I haven't. Uh... Yeah, I've got to move this camera. I do want this camera, but I have to move it. <clears throat> I was going to try to set it up so that I can see it. Uh, the tablet, it's not. It's looking like it's not going to work the well. Now that I put that camera where I did, um, I had figured on setting it up, the camera pointing at the uh, tablet, but I still need to see the tablet and read it, of course. <coughs> so let's get this. Uh, Got to do one way or the other. Let's, let me just get this thing down and see what it is I have to do to make this work. I don't have... See that table over there, my work table, when I cleared it off, I usually have junk on it, papers and stuff. Um, if I do the right thing, I don't think I can uh, get it. It's going to be such a severe angle, but we'll try it this way first. That's what I thought. Okay, so that, see, that's pretty good for aiming at my monitor, but not for aiming at that. And the camera's in the way of setting it to where I had originally thought. Let me try this. Maybe I can still see it way back over there. I think that's going to be too close. It's not as bad as I thought. It's too high. But, let's see. There we go. I don't know if I can get this back far enough, though. I can see where it would work if, uh, <laughs> if I didn't have stuff up there on my rack. I could set that tablet up on my rack, get the camera aimed right at, pretty well right at it. Let's let's try to figure out where I could go. Oops! Now that's too far. That way. It's going to sleep on me. Wake up. Now you can see what I'm up to. That's so funny how those reflections work. Oh, come on. Went to grab the mouse, and I have another one back up in there. It's not hooked up to anything. Well, it's hooked up, but the machine's not running. Okay, so uh, I can't figure out where to put the darn tripod. Oh, there we go. That might be better. I don't know why that thing keeps going to sleep every three seconds. It must not be set very good. Okay, I'm going to settle for something like that right there. Still not really very good, but... Distance needs to be a little further. Okay, that's good enough. Quit fiddling with it. Yeah, that's good enough. At least it won't be at a... I've done worse the last time I tried to do this, so... And I think I can still see the tablet enough to... <coughs> control it properly. <coughs> okay. Let's see. Let me uh, check my sound over there in the video. Okay. You can... Yeah, I think we'll work. Now... I don't have any other programs running on the computer. The viewers don't want to work right anyway. Okay, so as long as I don't have to, uh, it's a long ways to reach over there to, if I have to do use a touch string, but usually I don't need to with this mouse and the keyboard up there. I better move, get this, get my keyboard out of the way. I'll end up trying to type on it. I don't, well, I don't think I'm going to type. We'll see. If I'm going to type, I'll get it. Okay, so. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and keep using the wireless so when I have to move around. Where is that app? I think it's already gotten automatically alphabetized. So. I forgot what it was called. I just have to look at the, all of them. And I can roll through the pages with the mouse wheel. That's pretty cool, too. So, uh... I may have missed it already. Oh, there it is. Tiny Cam Free. It was pretty good. I mean, you know, there's some limitations on the free version, but... Uh, 
Well, there it is. It just it seems, see, I'd already set it up in there. So it's well, it's a little better this time than the last time I had it on in there. And of course, you see it picking up the audio. The audio usually it mutes by default. Oh, I think there, I turned that setting off, so it's. Uh, the audio was transmitting, but I don't hear it on the camera. I don't, I never have, I tried to hear audio the last time and I never did. Uh, I don't know how you get the audio to work. And the, and, and you do need, uh, I mean, uh, there's, well, I, I, if you had that Windows software up and running, see, all I have is a Windows XP virtual machine and it wouldn't install in there. I already tried that. So the software that you can, you know, that you can download from the manufacturer. Uh, but, uh, I don't know how you um, try to talk to somebody. You're supposed to be able to talk to somebody, you know, out, like if you have it on you, by your front door, you know. And that's where I either want to put it by the front door or over the garage out over the cars and the mail. And show, see the mailbox and the cars. That's really where I think it would be best. But uh, since it's uh, such a wide field of view, I think that would be it. But see, what does that do? All that brings up that histogram thing or something I don't know what that is uh, that brings up I guess that would be a pan thing if it was a pan camera that brings up numbers oh th this is where you can change the lighting and stuff if you clicked on that uh, this thing right over here you could and uh, I'm satisfied enough with that I don't want to mess with that and then tasker command I guess you can uh, I really don't know what this is. I guess you, I don't know if you have to know how to write like terminal commands to put in there to tell it to do something. That is supposed to be playing. If you had an MP4 recording, it would play it. Uh, this app obviously supports the streaming of H.265, but it, I think if you record anything with this app, it records it in H.264. Oh, and then that, see, over on the left, it says IP cam. And then if you click it again, it says IP cam, H.265, southwest, and the frames per second. But see, it's only doing at the most two frames per second. And so now you can see, you barely see me move at all. Uh, so um, that's not really acceptable to me. Uh, I'd rather go down in the resolution or whatever and... Uh, or, uh, and and get, uh, you know, at least 15 frames per second. You, 10 at least, you know. 15, it should be able to get 15. I do, I stream my videos at 30 frames per second, and it pretty, like on OBS, it tells you the frames per second. It pretty much stays at 30. Sometimes I've seen it go down to, you know, 25 or something, but uh, it can be done if you don't, uh, do more resolution than your, you know, your computer. Your, actually, my biggest problem, I don't think it's my, uh, you know, my routers. I think it's my uh, handling it. I think it's my computer not being able to handle encoding it at those resolutions. Uh, and uh, H2, back to H, same thing, H.265, 1.72, 2.3 frames per second, 108 kilobytes, and that's, it's like set at, uh, 500 and something or something. I'll have to go back and look in the admin page. And then if you click it again, it goes off. So it's a pretty good app. Um, that'll do a picture, I think. Yeah, make a snapshot. And then that. Make floating window. I don't want that. And then this is toggle video stream on and off. Web link. Pin to home. Share setting by email. Camera settings. Uh, let's go in there. I don't know if I ever went into that part. Okay, enable camera status. Okay, camera name, camera brand. It's not brand O N V I F. This is what it figured out automatically on its own. Camera model profile S. Now I had to pick a generic. I think this is the one. Yeah, I had to. Yeah, I had to pick a generic camera to get it to work. Uh, to access camera remotely, forward both ONVAF and RTSP ports on your router. Yeah, like to the internet. And I don't want that anyway. IP address. I think I had to hand type that in there and then port 8080. 
uh, protocol RTSP over TCIP HG64 forward slash HG65. Uh, uh, RTSP port number auto. Uh, but well, I'm not sure if it's streaming. It, I guess it is streaming over RTSP uh, over the Wi Fi. Well, over the wired. Yeah, it would be. So I think I'm not sure which one it's picking up the HTTP or the RTSP. That's what it supports both, what I gather. No, wait, it only does RTSP. Okay, so it's it's picking it up over RTSP. That's just a different protocol to stream on, you know. Uh, let's see. Use HTTPS. Okay, that yeah, it's not encrypted, but I don't care anything about that on my own local network, you know. If you were streaming it out to the internet to be able to access it remotely, then yeah, I'd set all, I'd want to set all that up. Username and password. I had to type those in. Audio. Oh. Okay, audio is only in the pro version. Motion detection is only in the pro version. Recording video is only in the pro version. Um, forgot about that. So that's why when you try to uh, hear any audio, it <clears throat> doesn't work. That's pretty sucky. You need a better app than that. Uh, I mean, that's one of the perks of the cameras to be able to hear what's going on out there. As far as talking back, I don't know if we'd use that much, but... Hearing what's going on would be great. Uh, let's see. Auto update remote IP address. Oh, yeah. That's actually talking about, get, uh, I think it's talking about getting your internet, you know, your IP address that you get, uh, auto updating it when it changes from your ISP. Because we, you know, unless you pay for it, you're pretty, you're pretty much going to have, well, it depends on the service, but my service, uh, you get dynamic. I mean, uh, dynamic? Uh, changing IP addresses. I don't think that might be the wrong word, but uh, dynamic. But uh, your IP address changes. Mine doesn't really change very often. I've seen it say the same for like almost a year because I run a web server and have for years. And I have to manually, I have a dynamic DNS forwarding service and all that that I've used, but uh, my, well, my new router won't. I used to have it set up in my router and it would, uh, anyway, it, when it got a new IP, it would tell that forwarding service, but now it doesn't happen very often, so I just change it manually whenever it happens. How I know is because my website's down, <laughs> but usually I catch it before it's been down too long. And remote IP address, leave blank for default, remote OMVIF port number 80. Hmm. I thought I changed that to 8080. That's the default. Maybe I did change it to 8080. It's all working, so I'm not going to jack with everything, anything. Um, then the remote RTSP ports auto, and the default is 554, which is what the camera is doing. I saw that. Encryption, I'm not using that. HTTPS. Port forwarding, not using that. Uh, channel number one. My router's on like channel six. I don't know what that means then in here. Aspect ratio, I changed that to original. It was on something else. And image or orientation, rotation, I'm sorry, no rotation. PTZ, pan, tilt, zoom. I learned what that means finally. I, could, I didn't know what it meant. And once I saw it, now I remember. Pan, once I saw the words of what it meant, now I can remember PTZ because it's pan, tilt, zoom. I remember real words. I don't really remember these little acronyms and stuff very well at all and like I was saying the other day I remember I don't memorize I can't hardly memorize but I can learn and my grandmother was a school teacher from 1920 till up in the 70s late 70s and she was right she taught me that there's a huge difference between memorizing and learning something if you basically if you memorize it you have it for in your short-term memory like for taking a test or whatever for a day or two or a few hours uh, and if you learn it, you'll have, well, she used, you know, she used to say you'll have it. Well, I used to think of it, I don't know what she said, I can't remember, because I'm old now, but she'd say, if you learn it, you're going to have it, you know, for a long time. And I would say, yeah, you'll have it for life. I used to think that when I was young, because I had a good short memory, and anything I ever, I learned by doing and learned by, I learned by watching and by doing. And once I had watched and then done it, I thought I'd remember it forever, but now I'm finding out different. Uh, but anyway, that's how I learn things, is by w watching and doing. 
Okay, so let's go on this side. The live view, that's where we're at. Uh, manage cameras. Scan the network. Yeah, that's how I, at one point I, I think I saw my, you know, my camera. Yeah, my camera that I'm using to make this video, I think I put it in. I saw it. I don't know if I put it in there. And then settings. Let's see, I can go to the settings. I can go to anything, I guess, really. Start uh, reacting today. No thanks. Oh, now there's the settings. I'm not going to keep going through all that. I did this before, and this is... Yeah, some more. It just a lot of settings in this app. I tried out another one that didn't have very many, and nothing hardly worked in it without paying for it, so I just uninstalled it. It was easier to set up. It automatically found... I think that was the one that found not only this camera, but my, my uh, phone as well. Let's see. Manage cameras... But this one, I think this one found my phone, but not the, this camera. I had to put this one in manually, which was kind of odd. Because it's supposed to be for this kind of camera, the, the security camera. The ONVIF cameras, that's what it says it's for. And that's about all I really need to show in there. But it's, it's slow uh, at that resolution. So I'm going to get out of there and just leave it like that. And come back over here to the computer <coughs> and uh, my throat's getting dry. My, I guess I better get a cough drop. I hate to, I gotta buy some of those. I need to put that on my grocery list. I keep forgetting to do it for the last couple of weeks. I'm doing it right now. Um, get on the desktop, open up. Firefox. And now I can write that down while let's open it up and everything. Ricola, that's what I like. Honey lemon. With echinacea. So they're not regular cough drops. They're na those natural things, you know. And they do work really well. And they don't... Uh, have that weird flavor. They actually taste okay. The lemon ones do to me. It's not... Yeah, echinacea. E-C-H-I-N-A-C-E-A. E-C-H-I-N-A-C-E-A. -E -E there we go. Okay. Yeah, my throat is getting drier and sore. But I've been making video... Well, I've been working on this for a week now, I think, and I've been <laughs> eating cough drops and wearing out my throat and wearing out my voice. Normally, you know, I, I'm on the computer doing stuff and, or watching videos, and I don't talk to nobody. Uh, and so I'm not used to talking a lot. Okay, so what was I going to do? I'm getting on here for some reason to change the settings. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, H.264. I don't know. I may have to restart the camera or something. We'll see. Well, I probably it'll just do it from the software. I didn't want to... Let's see if it asked me again. It's, it didn't used to. Once you logged in there, it would just go straight to the... Now it asks every time again. I swear. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it didn't do that. But see now on the computer at first until it starts overwhelming it, it's pretty good. So that is encouraging. I don't see why that tablet, you know, it's a newer tablet than my phones. It should, uh, well, I remember it does get faster. Oh, I could do a speed test. But I'm pretty sure it will do, a, you know, like 70 megabits pretty steady. And my phones will do 72, you know, 72 at the very best I've ever seen. They generally stay at 30 to 35 megabits so uh and i've got 200 well i've got a gigabit router and my wireless is i still haven't went and looked at the specs of the router but it's over a gigabit at, on the you know on any any of the spectrums there and um and my internet is 200 down and 10 up so you know if you just do a speed test then uh, generally you're um my wireless devices, they're not anywhere near 200, you know, so you'll see what they're really getting. 
Okay, so um, I want to change the video. Okay, now what I can do, I have finally figured this out. Am I on the desktop like I thought? Yeah. I haven't checked my stream in a while. Let's see. Oh, I don't have the mouse on there. My laptop went to sleep. Oh, oh cool. Unmuting it makes it uh, <clears throat> makes it wake up. Okay, so the stream number one, the first stream, uh, I'll leave it because that's the recording stream. The wire, that's the wired stream, and I believe that's the one it records. Oh, that's the other thing you can do. It's set for 800 by 600 resolution, which really I'd prefer to leave it there, but you can do 640 by 480. Let's do that first and see if the uh, tablet, and we'll just, you know, see if everything handles better with it like that. Well, it didn't uh, tell me I have to reboot or anything. So let's just go over here on the, let's go to the main main monitor and see what it looks like. It looks exactly the same. I don't know, maybe you have to reboot to. I don't have the wired cable in, so this is wireless, no doubt. Well, actually, I just figured out a while ago that you can't do both at the same time. So uh, when I had it uh, wired, the wire cable, Ethernet cable plugged in, I couldn't log into the wireless. Now, I didn't try the tablet. It could have been that it would work. Usually anything that requires a reboot, it'll pop up and say, do you want to reboot now? Or you got to, it'll, this will take effect when it's, when you restart the camera. So let's go to the tablet again. And, uh, yeah, I think I can just leave it there. There's no video playing or anything. Go to the tablet again. Wake it up. And uh, <clears throat> go back to the app and open it up again. I closed it. I looked and looked. There was only this app and another one that looked like worth trying to me. There may be others, you know, that I just couldn't find. But, um, okay, let's see. I don't see any difference in this. The, the picture definitely doesn't look any smaller and it doesn't look any more grainy to me on the actual tablet. It looks kind of funny on the camera, but remember you're looking at it through a camera, so two megapixel camera. But it's just as sharp as it was. It looks like the same size. Uh, I just realized something. That tablet's volume could be turned all the way down because I think maybe it's, it looks like it's playing audio. It was turned all the way down. Check one, two. It is working. And it gets a terrible echo. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Whoops, wrong way. Check one, two. Check. Hello, check. Hello, check. It's gonna... Check one, two. Yeah, it will... That's why they have it defaulted to mute. Check. Check, check. Check. Okay, so the audio works. I guess, I'm not sure what it is about the audio. It might have been recording audio that you can't do. Check. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, okay, well, there was no, let's see. Yeah, I'm viewing the camera on the on the tablet. I'm not viewing my live stream, so it's not coming from a mic that I'm wearing here, the lapel mic. That was coming from the camera itself. Cool. So, yeah, you can uh, not only see what's going on outside, but here on that app. All of a sudden, my, my, have to, my chair will turn over if I don't watch out. I'll flip backwards. The, ch the wheels are so worn out. There's only like one position to where it'll <laughs> safely hold me up. It's pretty crazy. I mean, look how clear that is. That's a reflection. No, that's not a reflection. That's the camera. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking, you know how it reflects? Uh, that's the actual camera. Camera to camera. It gets confusing. Camera one, camera two, stream. <laughs> okay. Um... 
I'm surprised that it looks, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, I, yeah, I guess so. Wide angle view, you can get closer without being, looking too close. If, uh, well, actually, that's about the same distance that I would put my regular phone camera in. It would be about right. So, but of course, you see a wider, whole much wider field of view that way. Okay, so, um. I'm wondering is how do I know? Okay, where was that? Did it tell the resolution frames per second? It doesn't tell you the resolution. I don't think that the resolution has changed. Um, maybe that's one of those things that <clears throat> it really does take a reboot and. Um, <clears throat> it's not telling you that down here and then image quality smaller the value the better okay it's on one um i could have it wrong it could be that the uh video one is the wireless it could be that the hmm could be video one is whichever, like it could be wireless or wired. I, I did not see anything in the manual to explain that, that that I could find. I might have to look back in there again and see. I could change that resolution. I don't think I'd be able to tell. 2650 by 1920 or 2660 by 1440. I wouldn't be able to visually tell what I was looking at. The way that looks on that screen, though, to me, I think that is... Well, what, 800, yeah, 800 by 600 would still be wider than it is uh, tall. And 640 by 480 would be. Okay, let me, uh, all I know is restart the camera and see if anything happens. So I'm just going to unplug the camera. That's how you do it. Don't use the restart button unless you want to clear all your settings. That sets it to factory defaults. So it'll go away. You'll lose a picture. Wait long enough for it to, oh, it freezes. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can see me doing it. See if it comes back automatically since I'm still on there. Yeah, I need to set that back to the default on the audio. Okay, it went away. The default on the audio came back. Okay, well, it hasn't started moving yet, though, has it? That's a, the last picture it saw. Yeah, I want that to be muted then. Um, I guess it will eventually start working. I may have to, no, there we go. I was going to say, I may have to come up, get out of the app. Okay, so it's still, you know, there's no change. No change whatsoever. Now I'm wondering if the secondary stream is not what I'm looking at. I may be looking at the primary stream. Hmm. Yeah, the secondary stream is, um, yeah, it's not, um, I can't tell if there's any difference in it. I'll put it back to 800 by 600 and see if it acts any different. Okay, so, oh, we got to hit apply. That's right. It leads me to believe that that's all you got to do. Just hit apply. Okay, well, I'm waving and you're not seeing it. So that might have made it, uh, of course, after it drops, you know, when it gets behind like that, it'll drop some frames and then catch back up. Okay, now let me try changing. I'm going to go ahead and change the encoder. There's H.264, baseline, main profile, and high profile. Now, the H.265 is only one to choose from main profile. So I'm going to go to high profile H.264 first, hit apply, and see what happens there. But I would think, well, it froze up, looks like. I would think you might have to restart the app or the camera to see that. Okay, well... It's working.
The, hmm, is it any better? It's not really any different, is it? Well, let's just go on and go down to the regular main profile for that. It did quit for a minute there. It froze up and then kind of blinked. I hit, uh, put it on HG64 main profile and hit apply. I'm sitting here, you know, like moving my hands and stuff ever so often to see. Really doesn't look any better. Now I see my hand moving. It might be moving just a little bit more fluently. Whoops. I could change the resolution, but I don't see that being a huge benefit. Okay, let's go baseline, H.264. And then what I'll do is restart the camera again and see if it gets a huge difference. Right hand, I don't see it working any better. I, I, I may not be actually seeing the changes though, so let's, I'm gonna restart the camera now. <clears throat> it should lock up, yeah, locked up. I'm gonna make sure it has time to shut down all the way. Well, if it's firing off, it's shut down instantly, isn't it? But it does take a little bit to boot up. Well, of course, now you can see that it's, um, you know, picture went away. Okay, and um, okay, there's a picture of me plugging it back in, or I guess that was, was the tail. That was the tail end of me unplugging it. You're not going to see me plugging it back in. The camera's off when I'm plugging it in. Duh, dummy. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, you, you get um, just a little, you know, picture of a camera. Now it's back up. But it is no, I can't see any, there could be a slight bit more uh, um, ghosting and a little blur, yeah, a little blur when I move my arms. But it's really no more responsive than it was when I was doing H265. Only benefit I might get out of that that I can see is uh, being able to view it over here on this computer. I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go to H.264 high profile, like I was thinking a while ago. And uh, just to make sure I'm in it, I hit apply, but I'm going to make sure I'm in it. I'm going to reboot again. And uh, <clears throat> and I'm not losing my login from re after rebooting the camera. That's actually, now that I think about it, unexpected. Audio fail, video fail, timeout. I bet I think it'll come on back. I might have to close the app and open it back up. We'll see. There it is. It's back. Okay. Yeah, there's really no benefit of changing the resolution. Not much. I mean, it seems a little bit more sluggish, but. Not a lot. I would have thought there'd been a lot more noticeable difference. So I'm gonna go, uh, you know, close the app, get back on the. Now watch me. I just realized something. Oh, I was on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't on the camera, the, my stream would be showing my desktop. Okay. Um, I'm on H264. High profile now. Yeah, okay, so that didn't really look any, it looks absolutely no better than the H265, which I kind of expected because H265 doesn't even have a high profile, it only has a main profile in this app, you know, on this camera with these its applications. So I can't, well I can try that. I'm gonna try that ONVIF app one time because if I open up the, uh, Browser, it may you know lock up again. I'm thinking that it might work because I know I play H.264 videos on YouTube all day, every day. You know, that's what they use now. So, oh, there's the camera. There we go. 
I was kind of one of was wondering, see if it, but it's not moving or anything. It's not moving good at all. Now, how do I get to the? But yeah, there's something weird about this app because I finally figured it out. It made made me think that it was taller than it was wide, but it's not. Because when you make it fit the window, it's wider than it is tall. Okay, that looks pretty much. It's better than on the tablet to me. Get some ghosting. It looks a whole lot like. Other than the colors and the and it is a sharper picture, but I get about the same. I'm not quite. Yeah, almost the same, about the same amount of a ghosting as I get on my uh, my my uh, phones. It's maybe a little less. Okay, so there's a difference there. And I can. It looks to me like it's not uh, being that the pictures on the Wi-Fi. Well, it seems like it does stream better. Uh, for one thing, for some reason, the app here picks it straight up when I change the codec. Well, why would it play the XG65 just fine over the wire, but not over the over the Wi-Fi? Maybe because it's too much. Well, it plays in the browser. If the browser wouldn't get all locked up, it plays really well in the browser. XG65 does. So that doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so ghosting. Now let's go down one one. Uh, I'm going to close the app altogether because that's where I got in trouble before trying to run it all at once. And oh, and I just realized, oh, I'm changing the, yeah, you only have one place to change the code, uh, coding, the code, they say coding instead of codec. That's actually wrong. It's so funny. I mean, as smart as these uh, people and companies are to build all this fancy electronics, uh, but Coding, if you were going to use the word coding and to do with computers, you'd be talking about writing, pro, you know, coding. I'm writing programs. Codec, C O D E C, and I'm not good at spelling, but yeah, I think it's C O D E C. That is the word, and the one and only word that's used for codecs. <laughs> and I would think it'd be pretty easy for them to get that right, even if they were using a Google Translate. You know, I get, I've seen people on their videos joking about, oh, this manual looks like they use Google Translate. <laughs> can't even understand it you know this whole manual is written in good English that's what's funny here this whole manual is written in good English the layouts all except for that's the first thing I saw that was like oh wait a minute that says coding instead of codec and I learned that because I was you know I didn't catch on to that word for a year or two when they when I first started getting into when digital video I got into digital video as it was being invented so It took me a while to catch on that it was codec, you know, and how it was spelled. So, I'm going to go back one more, or just one at a time, main profile. Oh, let's see if it makes a noticeable difference before I, uh, you know, reboot the camera again. I don't know if that's necessary. Um, you know, I should put that, let's see if I can do that. I'm clicking this thing. I'm doing a search for this over and over and over. Let's see, it might be in sound and video. I'll put it up in my quick, quick, uh, what have I got over here? Cheese. It's not there. Don't know where it might be. I've got a lot of audio video stuff on this computer. I never end up using very much of it, but it's there if I need it. <clears throat> There's some things I've always wanted to learn. Some of those dolls, digital audio workstations, or uh, you know, I was really, uh, I really, I've always been into recording audio since I was a little kid. And uh, now that this stuff is free and open source, I haven't. Uh, there's one app that I use a lot. Um, can't think of the name of it. Audacity, but. Uh, as far as the multi-channel, you know, like more than two channels, I haven't gotten, those things are hard to learn. I haven't learned any, I mean, one of them I started using some. And then, anyway, uh, back to the video. Okay, so I'm looking for, I guess this is why, one of the reasons why I haven't already done it. Where the heck is it? I don't know what menu it's in, I'm not gonna spend forever. Oh, it's video, but 
It doesn't take long to do that. I was just getting tired of typing that name out. Okay, there we go. There it is. And uh, I'm rolling my mouse wheel. There's not even a, something to grab. Well, you can do that. You can put just click your left mouse button and drag it up and down. As a matter of fact, you have to do that to find the uh, stuff. But look at there, it's frozen already. Okay, it began to pick up once I made it not be so big. Okay, so I don't know if I can actually see any difference other than uh, I think there's, no, there's not any less ghosting when I move my hand around. And when I move my head, I can see a little bit of, a little strangeness, and it might be fixed by changing the light settings and stuff, but it's actually too clear. You see me too good. So, um... Yeah, I'd rather point this out the window at other people. I don't think I want to point this thing at me. But one thing I like about my cameras is they have the nicest colors. My phone cameras, they're not high resolution, but they have the nicest color and the best automatic light settings. I don't ever touch those settings. <clears throat> well, I'll take that back. I do when I want to point the camera, the phone camera at the monitor. I have to, when, you know, to, I have to turn down the brightness <coughs> because of the white washes it out. It can't handle that. Okay, I'm going to go one more. Just take it one thing at a time. Now, I didn't reboot the camera that time. Let's go ahead and do the camera because I have no idea if that... I really don't know for sure if it changes unless you reboot the camera. And I hate to keep on doing that so much, but... <coughs> Owen VIF Viewer. Well, it's a video application. It could be considered an internet application. Oh, it wasn't through booting up. Let's see if it'll still pick it up. I just heard its last click in the speaker. You know how it's been coming right up? Let's see. Well, it's not working this time. Hmm. Connection refused. Huh. That's weird. <coughs> so it's on main profile. I haven't changed the pro passwords or anything. I want to see uh, sound and video. It might be there. Well, I did look through there, didn't I? Come on. I'm not very good at that menu stuff like that. That's one reason why I use the uh, search so much. Okay, it should be down in the O. Oh, it's not in there. Okay, O N N O. Okay, internet. Maybe it's in internet. There it is. Okay, we'll add it to the launcher panel. Where do I want to put that? I'll put it right next to VLC media player. There it goes. It just wasn't, the camera wouldn't boot it up yet. Now you got to roll down there and do that to see the whole picture. And also, well, it's still doing the ghosting, but more fluid than I've seen it. I can't remember if, if it's actually, well, the last setting I had it on, I don't know, is it more fluid than that? I'll have to watch my video again. I'm beginning to forget what I've been doing. I'm getting tired. Do the Miss America wave. I don't know how to do it. I just noticed that it looked kind of like that. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, I don't think that's... I want fluid movement, you know, I mean, if you want to look at the, if you want to flip over to your tablet or whatever and see what's going on outside, you want things to move in normal speed, you know. So, um, now I've absolutely forgot what I had set on. Uh, I mean, what it looked like a minute ago. Okay, I'm on the main pro. Yeah, I'm on the same. I'm on H.264 main profile, so that's kind of the you know that's the same setting, uh, except for the other one's H.265. I think the high profile. 
Well, it seems to really act just like H.265 main profile as far as the way the video acts. I won't bother with the baseline this time. Um, and as far as which stream I'm looking at, I'm still not sure. Uh, you know, if I'm... Um, I guess I'll look in the manual again and see if I can figure that out, but... Uh, Still not sure which one I'm looking at. If I'm look, I had thought I'd figured out that the wireless was the second stream and the wired is the first stream, and that it should be. And you can set which one you want it to record on somewhere. Uh, and I'm, it's on first by default, and that's what I thought. Okay, that's the one I want because it's the highest resolution. So that's all good there. But what am I looking at? And my logic would tell me I'm looking at the second stream uh, because that would use the least, least bandwidth for the wireless. You know. But I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, I'm going to leave it on the H.264 for a minute and go see. Well, I don't want things to go wrong, but let's see if see if I can go here. Oh, it's not even playing. Oh, need to log in again. That's really weird. That you keep having to do that when you switch around in the same window. Right now it's not playing. That doesn't play. Let's see if changing the frame rate does anything. I, I should have done that before, actually. I think that's the frame rate. Well, then that's something. This player, which I don't actually care because it's not, I wouldn't really, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind just, open, you know, I'm already got my web browser open most of the time. That does not play it. Huh. I'm going to put it back on the 45. Oops, 45. Not. I didn't know it would go that far. 63. Maybe. Do you think they sell cameras that goes? If that's the frame rate, do you think they sell cameras that go to 63 frames per second? Well, or 60. Maybe you try for 63 and then you hope you get 60 because 60 is the top that, you know, your 4K cameras are. Well, actually... You're more likely to get 60 frames out of a 1080p camera than a 4K camera. But, uh, oh, first stream, second stream. <gasps> oh. So first stream must be the wired stream like I thought. And what, it, yes, no, maybe. No, we're not getting nothing. But I didn't know you could do that because I've always had to hurry up and get off of this, this uh, page. I just saw that there was a drop down menu there. Okay, so uh, why wouldn't uh, the, their browser page work in H.264? I wonder if I switch to like high profile. Let's try that and see if it'll play that before I go back to the H.265. Now what's it doing? Okay, first stream. It's like, it looks to me like this little player cannot play H260. Four. Let's go back to the very lowest one first. I'm guessing, I'm not restarting the camera like I've been doing. Uh, I figure if it don't play one H264, it ain't gonna play any of them, you know? I don't see why that would make a difference. But uh, this thing has acted kind of, this page of theirs does act kind of buggy. And you get weird, unexpected pages for sometimes, you know, like that Chinese page and stuff. So, okay, let's just try the, uh, I guess I hit apply a while ago. Well, let's just go to H265 and see what happens now. That'll tell me, because I know that'll play on there. That'll tell me whether or not. Yeah, it's back to playing. So this player doesn't play. Oh, there's not a... That's why I never saw that drop down because there is no first, second stream on this page. Huh. That's really strange. HG64 high profile apply. So this supply works for this page here. Now, whether or not it actually changes the camera, I'm still not sure. When you go to the monitor, you've got second stream. But it won't play it. And you got first stream. And it won't play either one. 
Okay, so I don't think first... I still don't understand the first stream, second stream thing. Let me go look in the manual again. I know I did this before, but... Now let's go see if we can see... Oh, I'm still on HG64. Let's put it on HG65. Apply. Make sure it's still working. Yep, still working, but there is no other first and second stream on this page anyway. Okay, now I'm going to close the web browser because I'm worried about it starting to, you know, mess up my computer. Open up this viewer again. <clears throat> Well, I don't think they're se separated by wired and wireless the way I thought, though. I'm starting to think I was wrong about that. Okay, so, you know, it works. Oh, it's working now. You know, before I couldn't get the wireless to come in on HD65. Now it's working. This, how about that? Now, it's an, now it looks okay. And we know we're on wireless because I don't have any cable plugged in. It's actually just fine and dandy. Doesn't seem any... It might be a little more ghosting than it did on the wire. The wire, I really could hardly tell it was ghosting at all. But on the wireless, it is ghosting. But it's fluid movement. That's fine. Uh, you know, when you've got it outside, there's not generally going to be anybody up close. And, and I mean, you're not going to worry about that anyway. But, well, say if you had it on the porch, people would come up to the door. They'd probably be close to it because I'd probably put it near the door. Like, you know, just over it. I mean, not over the door, but probably to the side of it, you know, right or left or whatever. The thing I'm worried about putting it there is the way our front porch is. The whole left side is going to be looking at a wall is what's going to happen uh, about a four to five foot wall you know then it turns and goes out you know the garage is like jetted out from the house about five feet uh, and there's a little you know a roof over that part of the porch you know pretty typical um okay so i don't know why earlier it wouldn't even play this it's got me confused but yeah it's on hg65 unless of course i have to reboot to uh Unless it's actually still playing H.264 because I haven't rebooted the camera. That could be the case. Yeah, it could be. It may not actually change until you reboot the camera. So, well, I'll leave. Now, let's close this app because I don't know when it might, you know, overwhelm the computer. And uh, go ahead and reboot it. <clears throat> as far as on the tablet, um, let's see. I'm getting so tired, I'm forgetting what I've been doing. So I guess it's, I might as well get start winding up and getting ready to quit. No sense in keeping on going when I can't remember what I just did. But uh, I'm not, I was thinking I was going to end up having to run it in HD64 to get it to work, but now I'm not sure that it's that much of a help. But from what I can tell, Unless it wasn't showing, like, because I wasn't rebooting it every time. From what I can tell, the uh, the lowest setting doesn't uh, look bad, so I could run it in that if I if I need to. But what was it? It wouldn't. The browser wouldn't play. Oh, it wouldn't. The browser wouldn't play H.264, but it play H.265. Okay, now I'm back up, and it's just like it was. Okay, so maybe it really does switch. You know, when you hit the apply button on the on the web page, it's just like it was. Okay, HD 65 on the wireless, fine and dandy. Now, if the tablet, the only reason I might want to change to uh, lower, if, if if you know if it's if it's going to keep um, being so, ju you know, just barely a movement. A jerky movement every uh, so many seconds, then uh, I wouldn't want to run this H.265 <clears throat> because that I'm sure that uh, let's see the TV. I, my goal is really to have it being viewed on the TV, but 
Raspberry Pi can't do it. I'll, I'll probably try hooking up to it on, in that uh, Motion iOS, but it can't play this. Um, it's just, you know, 700 megahertz, 512 megabyte of RAM. And it has a pretty good video chip. That was what made it usable. But once 1080p got to be the standard on TV, uh, and the f software bloat, you know, updating. Uh, we went from XBMC to Kodi. I couldn't, I just couldn't play any videos on Kodi. Then it, I put Open ELEC, which is a lightweight uh, XBMC or lightweight Kodi, they could say now, I guess. Um, it, um, it did okay for a little while and then it just got to where it couldn't. After a couple of more, you know, a few more months and updates, it couldn't play. Uh, Video well wasn't watchable. Kept caching, you know, and stopping. So, but anyway, but the thing is that Open the LEC, it it just has a terminal output. So if when you plug, you know, like I have it plugged into my monitor view of the HDMI, and so when I switch over there to look at it, you know, all you're seeing is a terminal, and uh, so it's not really meant to be uh, what I'm needing. You know, what I need is something with a video output. Uh, to plug into the TV with via HDMI, and uh, so uh, I either well I've got one laptop that can do that, and that's really all I got. I, I had a desktop in there. After that, I put a desktop in there, and it used it for another well, I don't know a year probably. Or I don't know how long it was in there, maybe a couple of years, but it got to where it couldn't keep up. It was a single core Celeron, and it got to where it couldn't keep up. And uh, really, they didn't really like looking at it, so it was st stuck in the closet, and you know, and the wires running out. <laughs> I, luckily, I had a well, I had a 30 foot. I have a 30 foot HDMI that I thought I was going to need at one point, <laughs> and then ended up only using it for that for a short time. But uh, um, so I don't want to put a desktop in there, really. Back in that little closet's gotten filled up, you know, there's really, you had to do some real work to get something in there again, but uh, I was worried about it, the, the fans getting blocked and stuff and it getting overheating and getting burning itself up too, you know, being in, in the closet like that. But, uh, well, one thing it did help having the closets, you know, it, it wasn't the quietest machine ever, so, you know, with the, within the closet, it uh, you wouldn't hear it so much. That all the stuff in the closet would kind of absorb the sound. Uh, I, I kept, I always said, you know, don't leave that door shut with that thing running. It'll overheat, you know. I'm sure it would. Because uh, it was a, uh, what was it? I think it was a Celeron 2. I don't think it was a Pentium 4, but it was a Pentium uh, 4 class. But uh, single core, though. So you needed at least a dual core. And that the laptop that has HDMI, that's a dual core. But mom's using it right now. If I ever get her machine rebuilt again, then uh, she'll have an 8 core. And that laptop could be used like that, but I don't, it'd have to, it, they'll overheat unless you have the lid open, so I'm sure nobody's going to want, I wouldn't even want it. I mean, you got your TV up here on the wall, and then below it, you'd have a laptop with the lid open. So you'd have two screens, that little screen would be distracting you. It would always be playing, and you'd be looking at it, so you could use that 30 foot cable and have it over there at your chair and sit there and control the, whatever thing, anything you want on the laptop. Uh, but I don't think they'd want to do that. I probably, I wouldn't do that either. Maybe. Well, if I was, yeah, that probably would be how I would do it. Uh, I don't, well, of course I'd still need a mouse. I can do the keyboard account on a laptop. I don't like them, but I, I'd still need a mouse, which I can do. I got plenty of mice that I can plug in there. But I guess that's kind of what I really wouldn't want to sit there at the TV. See, like at the computer, you got your keyboard tray, nothing's in your lap or anything bugging you. You know, you don't have to worry about when you get up, you forget and get up and dump it on the floor. Uh, this is the way I like to watch videos now. I'm just, I don't, I have a TV over there. And I, you know, where I can sit in bed and watch it. But I haven't done that in the last three or four years now. It's an old CRT TV. And that's really kind of when I quit doing it because my eyes got worse to where you know, everything is squinch. You know, I don't like where it's in the letterbox and cut off, so I want it to be the full width. I don't want to miss any of the video. So then you've got the black bars at the top and bottom, and it's smaller, and the people are so little, I couldn't make anything out anymore. So I just got to where I was sat here and watch the videos. That, and I don't like to watch TV anymore. I don't like anything they got on TV. I like, 
I mostly like YouTube stuff, I like how-to videos and stuff nowadays, so. Uh, anyway. Right now, this looks great. I'm sitting here watching myself and talking and jabbering, and it's great. Over the Wi-Fi, on the computer, it is great. Okay, so let's go back and look again at uh, the tablet. Let's see. First, let's switch the camera again. <clears throat> looking at my checking my sound again make sure it's all still working so we'll get this oh i got with two mice i get confused two mices mices mouses all right now we'll go back and get our little app open again i'm beginning to think uh this isn't like i said this is an eight core tablet it's 1.8 gigahertz. That should be plenty with eight cores. Um, and for, I'm pretty sure it's four gig of RAM. I guess I have to look again and make sure. But uh, settings. Let me just see if I can look right quick. I keep thinking I'm going to look and I keep forgetting about the tablet. Yeah. So yeah, model number ZH. Can't read it on the screen. ZH960, I think. I was looking at my computer preview. Uh, Octa-core. Oh, it's 2.5 gigahertz. Well, I looked at something the other day with the specs of it, and it said 1.8. 2.5 gigahertz. Cool. Android version 6. Um... Baseband version. Okay, I don't know. Kernel. It never says the memory. In these things. Uh, where is my tool? All one toolbox might tell me. My toolbox. Where's my toolbox? This is a really good app uh, for tweaking your machine and keeping it cleaned up and everything. Well, there's a percent. ROM, CPU, okay, memory. <clears throat> Let me get my magnifying glass. I can't read it. It's right there at the beginning. 2.17 gigabyte of 3.69 gigabyte. Yeah, 4 gigabyte of RAM. It seems like it's using a lot of RAM, but that's how Linux rolls, uh, which, you know, Android is based on the Linux kernel. It, uh, it, you, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised that it's running up that high, though, with as little as I've got running, but, um, um, it's running good, so I'm not going to try to fix anything, but on the desktop, I see that all the time, uh, if you really pay attention. It stays right around in that range of how close to how much RAM you have of total usage. I mean, unless you're just running nothing on the machine. And uh, and then it, it may, I don't know how to say it other than I've, what I've read. Linux manages RAM really well, and that's part of how it works. Don't worry about it, you know. And it, I've been running Linux since 05, and I've, one thing I've always noticed, other than the problems I have been having recently today with firefox and all that with this playing these you know in that website playing the h265 video uh it's always done really well I've, i used to hardly ever have any problems you would never with uh you know the machine slowing down or locking up um i do have more problems in the last uh, in fedora 23 and now in fedora 28 than i ever had with that sort of thing i don't know what it is uh, unless it's just because my quad core with four gig RAM is getting too old, you know, not enough power. But uh, usually I never had really hardly, and I, you know, I was running single uh, Opinion 4. I started out with Opinion 4, uh, two, I think it was 2.5 gigahertz. And then I moved to a 1.8 gigahertz dual core machine that I used for years. And these laptops I'm talking about, which I don't use in a daily basis, I just use here and there. Um, and they were, you know, pretty much, well, that, that Pentium 4 was my first machine I ever built. I paid 650 bucks for that kit from Tiger Direct. And uh, 
most of all these other machines. Mom's machine we bought, um, well, it was originally a dual core, and I'm upgrading it to an eight core, and uh, <clears throat> 8300 AMD is what it is. Uh, I've already got all the stuff, and I already put it in an AS Rock motherboard, but it's not working quite right. It's The motherboard was too old. Uh, it's not even listed in the supported CPU list, but online some people said well it will work but it may not be may or you may or may not have trouble with it you know and i my my uh, ethernet wouldn't work the onboard ethernet i had to put a hundred all i had was a hundred megabit well all i had was a hundred mega uh, hundred megabit you know ethernet card to put it in there just to get ethernet going and then we got 200 down so that's no good i don't like that then i bought some uh Actually, they, I bought some PCIe Ethernet cards, and it wasn't thinking that there's actually only one PCIe slot in that on that motherboard, and it's in use for the video card. So, I think that's how it turned out. Anyway, something it didn't. I couldn't put it in there. And um, anyway, I bought an, uh, a Zeus motherboard that's that supports that uh, processor, and I'm going to be using that. Back to the present thing at hand. Uh, the tablet, okay, yeah, I just figured out it is a quad core. I thought it was. A, I saw the other day uh, whatever I was looking at was actually wrong information. It was an app. I was, it was a battery app, I think, that I was trying out or something. Did I put that on this thing? Yeah, because I wanted to see. No, that was the other tablet, her little Amazon tablet. It's 1.8 gigahertz. I'm too many machines. Her little Amazon tablet is 1.8 gigahertz, and I didn't ever see what the RAM was in it. I put a battery app on there. I wanted to see how much it was charging and everything, because I have one on my phone, my regular Android phones. It's really good and detailed. You know, it tells you the amps, it tells you the volts, it tells you when it starts charging, when it quits, and everything. And I looked and tried to find something for that Amazon tablet in their app store, and I got something that's a piece of crap. It didn't tell you any volts, amps, or anything. Just Oh, you've got this many hours if you're playing videos or if you're doing this or if you're doing that and all kinds of stupid stuff. But it did say what the processor speed was. And uh, so, yeah, this one, this 10-inch tablet, is uh, the one I bought for later after she'd had that one a couple of years. And it's uh, 2.5 gigahertz, 8-core, 4 gig of RAM. You would think it would be, like, way more powerful than my desktop. I often wonder, like, uh, there has been some projects, you know, to run real Linux on t tablets and, you know, on uh, ARM processors. And I've often wondered, I wonder how well this thing might run <laughs> that way. And Fedora, you know, I think Fedora Genome 3, I think it actually supports touch screens. So, and, you know, it did say that it supports ARM processors now by default, you know, the, the straight out of the box. <laughs> but I'm not going to try to do that to this thing. Of course, that wouldn't they wouldn't be a phone anymore. And this is a is is a two SIM card phone. It's a phablet. But she didn't want that, so she didn't use that part of it. You know, she'd never get her SIM card for it. That's what I thought she might do. And uh, and like use a headset, you know, to talk on it and everything. But I bought her a headset too. But. Uh, Why isn't that rolling? Okay, there we go. I was rolling the mouse wheel and it wasn't rolling. So what I want to do now is get back, come back down to earth and open up the little app and figure out what it was I was doing before. But, it, it, you know, I can tell, I mean, Android's not a super heavy operating system. I can tell it's not. I'm going to wave again. Yeah, see, you don't see me wave for quite a bit. So... Um, and now it makes me wonder, well, is it because of the Ethernet speed? Or uh, I'm going to get it, close it. Let's see. Okay, here's what I'm going to do to check. I think I'm going to do that now while I'm thinking of it. Let's go back to the desktop. And uh, there's a site I really like. Sometimes, that the, uh, sometimes the wireless will just stop working and you don't. I don't realize it. You know, and I only remember to check my speed every once in a while. I mean, my audio. I can see my video by just glancing up. I, I've, I've had it happen, and I can see my audio is working on my computer, but something goes wrong, and it doesn't work out on this, the stream. But uh, And also, that's why every time I switch, I always uh, 
always go and do the uh, distracting thing of you know checking my audio <coughs> which I just did okay so one of the thing that's nice about using lapels is I when I, I don't have to move the mic around to uh, reach up there to get to that laptop used to I uh, used to always have it, and I will have it back there again. But over here on that on that uh, rack tray, that slide out tray, where I have the tablet and the phone setting now, you, uh, I didn't show it. I don't think today, but it's a rack tray uh, that slides out. Just a computer rack that I have over there, <coughs> and uh, it's not a server rack though. It was. Uh, I think it's wider than a regular server rack. It was from the Telco. I got it. Some guy was. Some other company was in there taking replacing some a rack or two, and they said, got to talking to him, and he said, "Hey, you want this?" And I because we were saying how we thought it was cool, you know, and we thought it was same width as an audio rack, which is 19 inches. This thing's something like 22 inches wide or something. We didn't have a tape with us, and thought we could eyeball it. Anyway, I I took it. Me and my buddy were talking to him, and my butt, well, my buddy didn't really have a way to carry it anyway, but. We both like sound gear, and uh, internet speed test, that's it. Anyway, I took it, and uh, it's been in my room for many years now. I really love it. It would have been very expensive to buy it, that's for sure. Let's see. Um, there we go, auto speed test. Let's just go there because I know that's the site. Testmy.net. Oh, it's doing it right now. It's testing my speed. Well, we'll let it do. It's going to keep going for five tests, and I'm not gonna. I'll stop it. But we'll let it do one. <coughs> I didn't know it was going to do that. <coughs> I thought you had to hit the start button or something. <coughs> okay, what we got? We're on every ten minutes. Okay, so we got plenty of time. So. Um, 233.8 megabits uh, down and 7 megabits up. So we're not getting our 10 up. Well, but that's while I'm streaming. So that's that's about right for while I'm streaming. So um, I'm going to send this. Kind of like to... Uh, where's the rest of it? Go by site and then maybe I'll... Oh, it's called Open Speed Test, testmy.net. There's auto, which I just used. And, uh, oh, I have several, yeah. I don't know what the difference is, Open Speed Test. Oh, you know, they have, uh, yeah, this one's a more, but you, you, you like to download or upload separately. I don't really, I think they have an app now. That's what I was, that's what I would, uh, you can just go to the website. You don't, you can do it on, on a tablet or a phone by just going to the website. I used to do that before. And that auto one is really cool because like one time I was trying to figure out what, why I was having problems with my internet out in the garage using the wireless repeater. And, uh. I just set it run for 30 minutes, you know, or an hour, and then went back out and checked all the results. I'm like, oh, it's really fluctuating. That's when I figured out my routers were about to die. Okay, download speed, upload speed, automatic. I think I will send that to my mom's email and then go get it off the tablet. Yeah, that page would be better because that one that it automatically starts would kind of uh, it would confused me, so. I didn't know. I thought you had to, when you got to the auto tape page, you'd have to, uh, you know, click a start button. But evidently that one just goes. It was, it was all even preset to how many tests it was going to do and everything. I usually set like five tests. Well, that was five tests. So that must have been one I set up and I saved the link. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. I like it. It's my favorite one. Although the other one, uh, Speed Test, 
dot net or something i remember that address I, and so i half the time i still go to it because i used it for so many years so i just send that to myself and her and then um i went ahead and got off that page i think you know what i better go back and cancel that i don't want that using up bandwidth document expired in test escape okay make sure it's not still doing it in the background or something okay now we'll go back to the tablet and uh it's so funny how reflective that screen is i mean you get it's like i have automatic camera switching or something <laughs> i mean it's not a real good picture but it's pretty cool oh right i don't want to show you know all this stuff uh her tab you know her emails and all that junk so um i don't really have another way to unless i want to move that camera all over the world we'll see how my machine's doing while well, that's email has stopped why did it stop now it seems like it's going to work this time so okay yeah open with chrome See that it's going to work okay <clears throat> yeah also the tablet always saves the last page you were on oh yeah that was that player that i didn't like trying to get to the oh there's a bunch of stuff open that's probably why the so much memory being used i d uh, i don't know why i didn't Let's see, did I open? Oh, I forgot. I forget that when you close things, they're not actually closed. They're not shut down. So no wonder there was so darn much memory being used. Let's see. I've got. Uh, look at all the stuff I got running there. I I still had the, my, the toolbox. I still had the the settings. Still had the the monitor of the. All that stuff was running. I bet if I went and looked at the memory now, it wouldn't be. I thought it was a bit more than really I was expecting. It wasn't It wasn't acting up. It wasn't running slowly or anything. Now, I'm going to go to the automatic test. It's like I was there before on the desktop. List of Internet providers by zip code. Is this part of the test or is it an app? I think that is an ad. I don't see ads on my browser, you know, but there's really, do you know, I can't find a, like, ad. I don't think you can put Adblock Plus on on a te, on a Android browser. That's what I use. Either that or I forgot to try to set it up. This is Chrome, though, not uh, Firefox, too. But, well, there is, they have it for uh, Chromium, Chrome and Chromium for a long time now, though. Okay download yeah here we go combined okay every hour if I'll, I'll just say every 10 minutes but i don't think i'm gonna i think see if you can do five minutes you used to have to join you don't have to pay anything you just have to sign up and i never wanted to do that we'll see i don't want very many times just a few you can't go any less than five okay there we go let's see if it'll used to you could only do uh yeah, you must sign in to do lower than 10 minutes. Okay. That's what it is. Every 10 minutes is what I want. Five tests. And I'll probably stop it before that. But I just want to see what I'm going to get. Really, I'm mostly interested in the very first test, and then I may stop it. But this is really cool, though. If you really want to see what your speed is doing, test it over time, you know. And you could do it like once every hour for, you know, three or four or five hours, and you and that would be pretty good. I would say every 30 minutes if you're really wanting to get it over time and then do, let it do it over, you know, like three to five to ten hours even, you know. If, it depends on what, what your goals are to find out. But, uh, generally, I'm just not wanting to do a long-term test. I'm more in more of a hurry, so.
Now, where's the results? There it is. When I roll my, oh, I see this thing up at the top doesn't go away. So when I roll my mouse wheel, I got to be down lower. There. Yeah, those are, that's an ad there. So, oh, 15 megabits. Now, see, I'm going to let it test again and see if it gets any better. 15 down, 5 up. What's wrong with this? Uh, I didn't see an app. Uh, it'd be, it might. Well, it wouldn't necessarily it wouldn't work any better. But there's something wrong with this tablet's um, Ethernet. It used to always be way better than that. I'm in here with the router. You know, uh, usually it's in the living room. It's uh, hmm. I'm gonna look at the Ethernet settings. Who knows? Maybe it's been. Uh, Minimize that and let it run in the background. <clears throat> see if it gets any better. Let's go to the settings. Let's see. So it may it doesn't have anything to do with my camera. It's this tablet. I thought I just assumed it was a camera not doing like I wanted like I wanted it to do. Um somehow, you know, it could be on the wrong Wi Fi or something. It shouldn't be, because I think they're all it's connected to my regular Wi-Fi. I wonder if this thing can do... Uh, why is it so poor? Connected. It says 65 megabits, but the test was 15 megabits. So the best it's going to get is 65, but it didn't get that. So I... You know, I could have just remembered it wrong. Maybe it doesn't... It Its max may not be any better than the cameras. It's uh, you know, that seems to be something where they chinch to save money on producing these things, uh, not putting a fast enough uh, Wi-Fi in them, chip in them, you know. 0 0.160, WPA, WPA2, pre-shared key. Yeah. Cancel. Um, I don't think this thing will do 5 gigahertz. How can you tell? Oh, just if it shows up. I don't see. Well, sometimes they're not in the right order, so let me look through all of them. Yeah, there's more showing up now than there was earlier when I was, uh, you know, looking through the list of available Wi-Fi. I don't know why there's some of them come and go. Yeah. There's only my mine, and then my this is mine too. D link guest. I think if I click on it, it'll want to connect to it, so I'm not going to click on it. And then reload. Well, that would probably show you know reload the available stuff. Okay, so I'm going to test over time. Maybe we're going to use this app just the way I told you that it's good for. Uh, See, where do you go? Oh, you go down. That other tablet, the red one, I kept fighting with it because I kept wanting to go down, and you had to go to the left. Uh, her little Amazon tablet. When I, it, the, the charger, well, it, actually, the charger's charging fine. It's the cable. It's uh, broken up inside, and I was testing it, and then once I figured it all out, um, I was fiddling with it more, and I said, well, it's time to go through the software and make sure everything's okay, and I fiddle around with it for a whole day. But um, anyway, yeah, I'll just let that sit there just like that, let it run another couple tests, and, I, and it'll be a while, uh, so I don't know. Like I said earlier, I'm, I've been, how, what, about an hour ago? I don't know what I said. I'm getting tired. Yeah, I've been going almost three hours now. Uh I'm going to let that test keep going. Of course, you have nothing but wireless on that tablet, so that's why it doesn't view the videos well. Uh, but then when I went to the, uh, you know, went to the camera over wireless on the desktop, and, of course, the desktop's wired, but then it has to talk to the camera from the router to the camera is wireless, you know. So that's why it's better. It's just fine over here, but not just fine over there. So it's a tablet. 
so there's nothing so evidently uh this camera is as good as i hoped but nothing wrong with it. it seems to be doing pretty well let's see yeah that's fine there's not a thing wrong with that now then tomorrow <laughs> another day another test <clears throat> i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it on the uh mic stand and tomorrow i'll take it out first i'll go to the front porch see how it does there but i was wanting to carry my tablet around with me to you know so i didn't have to keep running back in here to, to look at it but i'm not going to get any real good results that way well i can put that uh one of those camera viewing apps on the and it's not the app i kind of wondered if the app was a problem you know it wasn't that good or something but it's not the app on the tablet it's uh my phones are, I've never, I hardly ever see them that low, you know, 15 megabits. They're usually 30, 25 at the, you know, if they get kind of slow, they're like 25. So I can take, um, of course, this, I have one of my phones. Why I am now, I have three phones and I've only got two working batteries. So I have to, I've been swapping that one battery, the one that's in the, uh, the, the one I'm using for my lapel. When I want to have my lapels working, then I've been taking it out of camera one, putting it in here. And then when I get done, I put it back in camera one. So I have my surveillance camera again. So, um, I guess I will have, I will have to, I'll probably end up getting some batteries for them, but I haven't wanted to do it right now. I, I'd really, yeah, I kept thinking, okay, they, you know, even though they're about seven, not too bad, $17 each, three times 17 what about spending that on a, a camera? Because I don't have a real camera, you know, anymore. It's been years since I've had a, a camera. And uh, I'd like to have a real camera with optical zoom, you know, and everything. And I don't think I'd spend a whole bunch of money on one, but I've looked at them a couple of times, those cheap Chinese cameras that are 100 to 150 bucks. And I saw one. It'd probably be, I think it was on sale, but it was like 90, 87, 90 bucks that had these sounded decent you gotta watch those things i've done a lot of looking at those long before i was looking for a security camera and uh you know they'll say that they're 4k but then when you look at this and they always have the specs most of the time on their page and when the actual specs if you learn how to read them it's some software i saw this before too somewhere else but it's a software trick they do to kind of emulate 4k in software the actual sen image sensor is not a 4K sensor. It's really just based 1080p. And I thought for a while, uh, I've been thinking about this for several few years now, you know. Uh, I'm slow to buy stuff. Um, well, when I first started look looking at them, I couldn't, I couldn't afford it. Uh, now I could buy something, but I'm not going to spend a bunch of money. Um, can't afford to spend a bunch of money, you know. Um, So, uh, there's one camera I saw on Amazon, uh, Chinese, one of those Chinese cameras that I had found it in my links. I'd seen it before and it had gone down to 90, you know, 90 bucks. I can't remember now if it was, uh, 4k or, or I don't, I'd take forever to find it again. No point in showing that right now. Anyway, uh, one of the things I really wanted was if I was going to buy one that it could, uh, it says you can use it for live streaming on like on YouTube or whatever, you know, and I don't know if it does it over the Wi-Fi or USB connection. It wouldn't be Ethernet. They don't make them like that. Uh, but actually, USB video works machine so hard that my machine can't hardly handle it. If it was really high, you know, if it was 1080p or, or 4K, 5 megapixel is in the 4K range of what I discovered. When I was security cameras, they don't call them 4K. They just, they just go by the real resolution, you know, 1080. Uh, and I don't know why instead of saying, uh, when it jumps up from 1080, they say, <coughs> they do too call them 4K. It's 1080. They'll say, they'll always call them 1080p because everybody knows what that is. And then they'll say five megapixel, three, four and five megapixel when they're higher than just two. Generally the highest 1080p I've seen is two megapixel. And then they go three megapixel, four and five. That's how they'll advertise them. And then they'll say 4K. But I have looked at them, and if you look at the specs on 4K, uh, some of the some of the 4K cameras, the, uh, and the ones that are like, you know, 
60 to 70, $75 or 180 dollars each instead of like those expensive uh, you know professional cameras i'm not going to buy something like that they're just too expensive anyway i have seen some that that were five megapixel that they were that were they were saying 4k and then they're down in the list of specs five megapixel and so i don't think they were just lying you know uh, i think that is just in that considered to be 4k but of course 4k could go way on up there you know it just like you can have 1080p at two megapixels on like on my phones or you can have 1080p at um uh, i guess you can go up to 20 20 24 megapixels at least go up to like 12 i'm pretty sure and that makes a huge difference in the uh well, like you're looking at this, and then you've seen a lot, you know, earlier in the day in the videos, you'd see me on my little two megapixel camera. Like I said, I like the colors better on it, but the sharpness and the image of the image, and I can go in here and adjust that, you know. Actually, I think you can do that. And can you do that in here? No, that this this doesn't have that. I'd have to. I could go in there and do that, but since it's gonna, I want to get it out where it's gonna be, and then decide if I need to adjust the lighting it's going to be completely different outside you know than it is in here so i don't want to fool with it until i get it where it's going to be but now i'm finally feeling better i was beginning to think that the wi-fi was not going to be usable and that i was flat going to have to fool with sending this thing back you know and trying to make sure that i would get to send it back for free you know uh, i was thinking okay now what about it it would be wrong enough that i could get to send it back for free you know and I was like, well, and if the Wi-Fi don't work, that should be enough to send it back for free. But now I see that it does. So, uh, and this is, I'm in HD65. Let's get out of here again. Uh, and I, now that I, I well, funny enough, well, you know, that player, why would it, I didn't, it didn't seem like it was that messing up my computer just now. Why would that be? Maybe what I'm looking at is actually the 800 by 600. I still haven't figured that out. Um, and there's, I don't think, yeah, there's nothing in that program to tell you. I would like, I need another program, something. If it would play in VLC, oh, I was going to put it in HG64 to see if it would play in VLC. Um, I may do that. I may go ahead and do that. Although, I'm getting to where I need a break again. Let's see. Uh, let's go there again. And really, I'm like I said, I'm tired enough that really I need a, I need a quit, not a break. Okay, now let's see what's going to make me up. Well, now that I'm, I wasn't sure I was going to keep them, but now that I'm beginning to, oh, yeah, it won't, th this player, well, that doesn't actually, I can't use this player either way, so it wouldn't hurt me to have it. Yeah, it's in the HG65. And so I'll try one more time with VLC before I go ahead and... Uh, I want 110. And where is the network? ONVIF is port 8080. I'll try that first, and if that doesn't work, then I'll try... Uh, where's it? There it is, the main network. So RTSP, I tried that and I did, didn't work, but you got to get that address just right, and I might not have had it just right. So 554. But first, I'm going to try port 8080, see if it'll play. Wouldn't play the videos that were saved by it. That that would I don't know for sure. So, uh, and I guess now you know it's been it's always on motion detection. So, well, I guess you I don't I guess you could turn it off, but I haven't. So. Uh, there should be all kinds of uh, uh, videos in the different formats that I just did that I want to copy over. 8080 HTTP. Okay, so can't play it. Okay, now that we'll try. Uh, you can't you can't alter that, can you? Instead of having to start over every time. Advanced open. No. Network. Oh, you can do that. 
that's fine. Okay, now, uh, where's the R? I lost it. RTSP554. The thing that might be that missing here, though, I'm afraid is like you might have to put, uh, is in a lot of cases you have to put, uh, now it's not coming up with an error, but it's not playing anything either. Huh. Wait for a little, let's see, it looks like, there, oh, now here's an error. Well, that says 8080. Let's look, make sure I'm trying to play the right one, yeah. Oh, you can go check the log, and it might tell you more about what your problem was. But uh, yeah, okay, not gonna work. Uh, I'll go ahead and try. I haven't tried RTMP. Anyway, some uh, okay. For instance, oh, I forgot to. Uh, one here clear the playlist it's got me confused <clears throat> okay I want uh, and it remembers the last few ones you did and then you end up with all of your mistakes in there I'm trying to remember how you I think you do this for, and then like for uh <clears throat> from to make it work in uh, OBS Studio, you have to have that's what you for my cameras, my phones. You have to have it like that. That doesn't work. I've tried that already. Okay, now <clears throat> um, let's try the RTMP nineteen thirty five. Oh, okay. When it's like a year, sometimes it helps me to remember it. Okay, RTMP. Let me see. It doesn't give you, oh, yeah, it doesn't tell you anything about how to syntax it. But RTMP, I think it's how it goes. And then uh, 1935. Okay. It didn't work. Close. Let's go back to the player and see are you gonna let me go there now the machine may be acting up it doesn't seem to be there it didn't work <coughs> okay um they came back over there and joined me these programs never used to do that and now they're doing it left and right i don't want it to jump from one workspace to another there's a reason why I open them in other workspaces so that I can find them easy. Okay. Um, I wonder if we're beginning to act a little funny. I don't know if uh, it was because of, it might have been that VLC was beginning to act up. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and change to uh, H264. And I won't reboot the camera or anything. And I'll go ahead and see if if it plays in VLC. Then I'll know because I know VLC will play H.264. It may not uh, handle it very well. But let's just try that. Let's see. Yeah, try that one first. Nope. Uh, try the HTTP. That's the one I usually have success with where is it yeah I'm 10 HTTP no no worky oh not multiple files I wish that network stream was a shortcut over here that's the one I use all the time okay I want RTSP Five, five, four. 
It says they're not doing anything. Okay, it actually looks like it's trying to work. Nope. It tried to work, but it didn't. You know what it could be? I just remembered. You have to log in to play those videos. But that one looked like it was going to work. Oh, don't clear the playlist. Uh, advanced open. Yeah, there's some examples. Uh, HTTP and see, it, it seems that to do an HTTP stream, there always has to be, well, that's an example.com. Uh, you know what? I don't think I do put in the port for HTTP. Um, but then, you know, if, if it's going straight to a file, then you do stream.avi, or in this case, it'd be stream.265 or 260 or MP4. That's right. I wasn't even doing it. And, uh, yeah, in OBS, I was thinking about that port thing. I don't have to put the port thing in there. I just put forward the IP and forward slash video, I think. But, but you have to log into this stream. You can't just watch it. And there is a way used to anyway. I don't know if that would, yeah, I guess it would work since I'm not doing the secure connection. But the password and all would be sent in the out in the open. But it doesn't give you any examples of how to do that. Uh, but you put the you put an ampersand in there. I know that. Uh, I'm not sure how you do it. Uh, let's see. Well, this is just a default password, so it wouldn't matter if I showed it or anything. Uh, Cancel. Let's go ahead and clear those out. It gets me confused with all that stuff in there. I guess it would might be easier to put it into OBS Studio than it would be to desktop. Oh, okay. I I'll have to get on I'll get on the camera for a minute here. Yeah. Oh yeah, you do put the port HTTP IP address port forward uh, forward slash video. That's how you do it in OBS Studio. And uh, I would have to kill my stream to try and do that. Uh, well, but you got it. There's no password involved in mine. I don't, you know, my phones, that's purposely didn't put a password in there to make it not hard to do, make it easy to do. Uh, which I really didn't uh, think, you know, I didn't really feel like I needed a password in my own local network. Okay, so. Uh, 110, there it is, 8080. Okay, I don't know where you would put the password in that string, though. You have a, I've seen it, I guess, you know, you'd have to go looking in the, yeah, you'd have to go looking in the, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it still supports it, but you could put the password, username and password in there. You'd be like, I think it'd be username, ampersand, password. But where it goes in there, I can't remember. So, that's I think that one would have played if it wouldn't have been for the password problem. It's not going to ever play it. I just realized that without the password because that's uh, you know for, that's why this one does work is because it's got the right address and it's got the password in there. So you know it's got a place right here to just put in username and password make it simple it's real simple yeah and you just put the, you don't even need to put http it's just ip port 88 there it is <clears throat> and that, you know okay it started i saying at first it wasn't it wasn't working it just took it a minute to start playing but yeah that's really good okay so i forgot what the other thing i was thinking about doing but i got a feeling uh, as i I'm getting to need a break too badly to ever to do start any more tasks here. I'm gonna go ahead and close my browser and then <clears throat> get back get back to on the tablet here and check my tests that I got started. Yeah, I think I'll really just let those tests run for a while. Uh, oh, it's doing one right now. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. See if it improves any. It could have just been like a 
some sort of glitch, you know, some interference in the way airwaves or something uh, that caused it to be so slow. But every time I've tried it on the tablet, uh, well, you, the first time I tried it yesterday, day, be day before yesterday, it was just terrible. It just wasn't usable. And then it seemed a little better today. Darn. There's, there's all this stuff up here at the top blocks me from having enough screen space. That was a little slower, 14 megabits. 14 megabits down and 15 up. I mean, 5.6 up. This tablet is not doing good. And what was it I was wanting to... Oh, you might find the specs. Well, I guess I could go find the specs of the tablet, you know. <clears throat> Probably have them in my, somewhere in my bookmarks, you know, of all the, act, what it's supposed to do. But, well, I looked in the, uh, the connection speed in the settings there was 65 megabits. So that would probably be enough to do a decent, you know, decent, uh, I don't know. I don't know what this Wi-Fi specs are of the camera itself. Uh, evidently, they're okay because it comes through on my, you know, on my to my desktop just fine. I can't really see any visual difference between that and the wired connection. So the tablet is just not going to be that great for viewing it. And on the TV, by the way, a view the way I have now to view things is uh, in, off the internet is a Sony DVD player that has. Uh, it's got Cody on it, the media Cody media player. That's what runs it. And so, uh, you know, you can watch YouTube and you can watch, you know, whatever's in there. Uh, plus, you could pay. We don't do that, but to watch certain things, you know. And uh, it has its own custom mix of Cody. You know, it's not like the straight open source Cody. I mean, you know, when if you would just download it, install it, <clears throat> it has some their own picks. You know, like I don't remember what they are, but you know, commercial pay for pay-per-view stuff <clears throat> and uh, but it also does have a feature where you can open up uh, a web browser i think it's firefox or something or strip down firefox or something it doesn't work really great and it's hard to navigate with them you know with the uh remote control i i don't like doing that uh but uh you can type in addresses and go to things on it uh so theoretically, you, what you could do is save that camera's IP and everything in that web browser and view it. You know, well, I bet that machine couldn't handle it. My my quad core, it ain't no quad core. I don't know what it is, but it ain't no quad core with four gig of RAM. So it's going to be an ARM processor, and you know, it's going to be just barely enough to. It's several years old now, so it's older than the tablet, older than my phones, I think. So. <clears throat> It was, uh, it would, uh, that's what it was. I was going to put tiny webcam monitor on one of my phones. That's what I was thinking. <coughs> um, I have to decide which one. I think that's going to have to be for tomorrow, though. Um, but the thing is, I'm about the only one that would fiddle with that, you know. And I probably wouldn't like it too much because I remember you've got to go fiddle, flipping through all the the main menus. You got to get out of them and go to a special place to get to that web browser, and it's kind of sluggish, you know. And so I doubt that it would make a decent view of the camera. Anyway, oh, and I forgot to go do anything. I'm, uh, <laughs> I could have. Uh, I guess if I could show myself like I've been doing, you know, open this up. Either show something on the computer or show me uh, this way. It's a, it's a kind of a back door way, but it works pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so, um, yeah. Well, I would, I, I really would, you know, now that I remember it again, I would like to go. I'm just going to go to Google Play and install that uh, tiny webcam on one of my phones. But uh, I have to figure out which one I want to film with and which one I want to use. To, of course, it's so tiny, but I can at least see. I didn't want to use my phones. I thought of doing that at first instead of even using that tablet. But I thought, well, I think that tablet has faster Ethernet. I mean, Wi-Fi. 
And uh, I thought, uh, I'm going to close this. And I thought that, uh, you know, it's too little. My phones are only four inch screens. So, uh, oh, I was trying to look at my preview and I couldn't get in the right place. And uh, I think it's doing another test or just got through. Okay, and 14, 5 by 6. I think that might be the average up there now that there's been several tests. But uh, I'm going to have to go is what I'm going to do. But, yeah, all tomorrow I guess that's what I'll do is put it on a phone and see if it, it works any better and then tell me what to go where, what to go for, you know, how to go forward. All right. Uh, see you later. Mm -hmm.